Good morning, Pastor Hal. Good morning, Brother Bill. Praise the Lord. Yes, I do. Good morning. Happy Open Chat Friday. How hey. you guys doing? Hey. Uh, all right. So uh, bring. I've got, I've got the three amigos here. I got you. I, I I dare you to give us a question that can stump these two pastors sitting here. I dare you to stump these pastors. You know, it's bring not it that on. hard. Bring it on. Um, yeah, give them something hard to do. <laughs> uh, it, there's uh, um, there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about, uh, including uh, Brian Ross's uh, response to Trey Searcy. I thought that I video was to totally it. epic. I didn't um, get to it's see totally it. epic. I loved it. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I, I thought we might just end uh, this weekend with a bang. We've got on Monday... Randy will be shipping copies of Empowered by His Grace. I know, I know I have mentioned this before. I know I'm so excited. I can't deal with it. I love the, I'm so, I can't wait to get a copy of this book. How do you even know what he's talking about? He I can't, can't even, even speak. talk. He's stuttering. Right. Yeah, it's, so, it's awesome. Your words, I can't baby. believe this thing is coming out. So uh, there's a link beneath, right. beneath if you want to pre-order the book and get a copy. You'll right. get it next week. It'll be awesome. Uh, so we have a chapter in the book. Here's, here's, here's something to entice you if you're like, well, I don't know if I want to get this. Here, there's That's a chapter. Kind of the way I am, so it, I know, up. right. There's a chapter in the book called 101 Spiritual Blessings the Moment You Believe. All right, you ready for this? I am. All right. Number one, we are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I say amen we, to that. <laughs> amen. We yeah. are justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Amen. Our faith is counted for righteousness. We have peace with God through that, our Lord Jesus that's a, Christ. That's a good one. We are given access by faith into this grace wherein, wherein we, we stand. stand. We are given the glory of God. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is given unto us that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You know, that's a good one. We are justified, pardon me, we are Go justified ahead. by his blood. We are saved from wrath through him. Amen. We are reconciled to God by the death of his son. We are baptized into Jesus Christ. We are baptized into his death. We are buried with him by baptism into death. We are given a newness of life by which Romans we may forever six. enjoy. We have been planted together in the likeness of his death. Our old man is crucified <laughs> with him. We are freed from sin. Amen. We now liveth unto God. Sin no longer has dominion over us. We are freed from the law and put under grace. Praise we became the, the servants of righteousness. Amen. We are in Christ. We are no longer under condemnation. We are made to walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
That's we are voice. now led by the Spirit of God. We became the sons of God. We become heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. We are promised a glory that shall be revealed in us that is not worthy to be compared with the sufferings of this present not time. Not worthy to be compared. Amen. We have a Holy Spirit inside of us who helpeth our infirmities and maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered when we Just pray. Can't do it. Amen. We are glorified. We become utterly inseparable from the love of God. We are given the capacity to be filled with all joy and peace and believing and to abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, I love that word abound. We are, we are established according to Paul's gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which been, was kept secret since the higher. world began. I went, in, I, went, I went in order from Romans to Philemon. Oh, we are okay. given the chance to receive rewards of the judgment seat of Christ for our works built upon the foundation laid by Paul. Amen. We are washed. We are sanctified. We are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. I believe we're glorified, too. We're given the opportunity to run a race to receive it the prize. We are all baptized into one body by one spirit. We're all made to drink into one spirit. We all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. God makes plans for us that as he which raised up the Lord Jesus, he shall raise up us also by Jesus. Amen. God prepares for us a glorified, incorruptible body. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Thank we become God. a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Oh, behold, all <laughs> things are become new, my We're brother. We're given a, the ministry of reconciliation. We become ambassadors for Christ. We become empowered by his grace, which oh. is sufficient for us in our sufferings, in which his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Amen. We are crucified with Christ. Christ liveth in us. That's 50. I need a sip of coffee. 50? And All right, 51, 51. More. the life we now live in the flesh, we live by the, the faith, faith of the Son of God, God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Mm, mm, we, mm, have mm. we have put on Christ. We may now appropriate the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen, I we, love that. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We Does are made Bible holy and without blame before him in love. We are accepted verse. in the beloved. <laughs> we have obtained an eternal inheritance. We may now be to the praise of his glory. We are, now, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise under the day of redemption. We're given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Love that. They do, we are do. given the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We may now know what is the hope of his calling. We may now know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We may now know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. And I do. I'm a believer, according brother. According to the working of his mighty power. He hath quickened us together with Christ. He hath raised us up together and made us sit, sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We're made nigh by the blood of Christ. We are now his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We're given access by one spirit unto the Father. <laughs> we are partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. We may now be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In the Inner man. We may now know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. We can be filled with all the fullness of God. We may become a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the, the fullness, fullness of Christ. Of Christ. Amen. We are a new man which after God is created in, in Christ, Christ. in righteousness and true holiness and renewed in knowledge after, after the image of him that created him. Good. We're given a spiritual armor to wear so that we may 
be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes, and they are. The Lord begins a good work in us and will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that a great problem? We are filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, under the glory and praise of the Father. God works in us both to will and to and do of to his do. good pleasure. You're in Philippians now. The righteousness of Christ is to put is put to our accounts. Amen. We may now know him and the power oh, of his resurrection. Man, we may now know the fellowship of his sufferings. We are made conformable unto his death. We can now do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Yes. We are given a hope which is laid up for us in heaven. God makes us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints Just in light. Check with our Pastor Hal over we here. are delivered from the power of darkness. We are translated into the kingdom of his dear I son. Love, Ten yeah. more. <laughs> wow. Well, don't I lose steam now. We are able to be rooted and built up in him and established, established. in the faith. Oh. We are given every reason to abound with thanksgiving. Amen. We are made complete in him. We are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Mm -hmm. We are not only buried with him in baptism, but also risen, risen with, with him, him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. We are, by the way, also forgiven all trespasses. No. Our life is now hid with Christ in, in God. God. We are made able to walk worthy of God who hath called us unto his kingdom and glory amen the peace of god may now give us peace always by all means amen we are not given the spirit of fear, fear but of power no and of love, love and of a sound, sound mind. mind there is now laid up for us a crown of righteousness and we now have and we look for that blessed hope amen was that it that's it that's the last one praise the lord is that all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I actually it was actually 120, but they were dupl a lot of them were oh, duplicates. duplicates. There's a lot of duplicates in here too. Well, here's yeah. the thing. That I tried to behave. I mean, but can you imagine <laughs> me having to sit through all that? I know, and exactly. don't have a comment. I thought you were hilarious. Well, uh, so that no, that is just hilarious. just one chapter in Empowered by His Grace. Uh, which is now available over at uh, Dispensational Publishing House. Thanks so It'll much to Randy copy. White. Hard copies. Hard copies. I have photos. Randy has finally gotten, uh, uh, he has actually gotten his first hard copy of the book, and it looks fantastic. I can't wait. Um, by the way, this is, is the Grace, Grace Life Podcast. We are your mad, bad brothers in Christ. Amen. I am so mad and bad today. Mad in the sense of mid acts Dispensational. Bad in the sense of blessed and delivered. Uh, I'm some guy named Joel. This is uh, Freddie Bear, uh, Be uh, Becca Meyer. I'm not going with the boogers anymore. The boogers, okay. Um, That's Freddie right. Bear, Becca Meyer. He's the pastor emeritus of uh, Fellowship Bible Church. I'm the lowly associate pastor. And this is a fellow, another pastor we have here. He's my he's my co-pastor. He's the dean of theology the, of the right. Grace School, uh, Becca Meyer Grace School of Hard Knocks. Pastor Hal Becca Meyer on the end there. And I went to that school, by the way, <laughs> out there in a trailer that was as hot you could fire you could fry an egg on the top of that trailer. And the fan, all the fan did was kept maybe blowing the sweat out of my eyes. That was a wonderful time. Then we graduated to the Waffle House. <laughs> Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? You doing okay? Well, all things considered, am I allowed, to ask, first world am I allowed to ask personal questions about uh, your wife and your yeah. family? Is everybody, how, how, Gwenny had her final treatment yesterday, right? She did, and she came through it better than I did. After me, I don't know, I hope she's not listening, but after me having <laughs> to sit in that the most uncomfortable chair for about five hours while she's getting a treatment, I could hardly walk after that. But she's doing great. I tell you, I praise the Lord. She is one tough cookie, I'd say. But she uh, uh, she just keeps going. She is not going to let it go. How's her. Carter? Carter is still progressing. Grand, I think grandson he's, who yeah. uh, fell off of, of a golf cart, hit his head on concrete, had some brain bleed going on, and then the uh, half of his face was they were they were fearful that half of his face would be paralyzed. But praise the Lord, that's back. I've only seen him once, and. Uh, Looks healthy. You know, he gave me the old big Carter bear hug, so he's feeling pretty strong. And uh, I know he's itching to get back out on the uh, on the diamond. He's a ball, baseball player. Uh, Pastor Hal, how you doing, brother? He looks good. How's your trip? He? I'm happy and I think, look, I think you ate a lot on that trip, didn't you? 
Too much. <laughs> uh, okay, for everybody, tell them where you went. Uh, well, for Marilyn's birthday, we went to Sarasota. That's right. right. What did you see in Sarasota? Well, we did we did Ringling, which they have some interesting museums there. Yes, uh, they do. I've been and, there. Uh, I guess they they don't do circuses anymore. Just They just have a museum? Yeah, they just yeah. have the museum. You see what once was. <laughs> yes. Uh, the art museum is really impressive as which well. Which one? Oh, the... The Ringling. Uh, oh, they have an art museum, Ringling? Uh, John Ringling was quite a, a collector of yeah. uh, Rubens and any of the uh, a lot of oh, the yeah, other I masters. Love Rubens. Oh, I yeah. love Rubens. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's Not got, just the sandwiches either. Yeah, stat <laughs> he's got a lot of statuary and, and all of that type of stuff. He donated to the Ringling Museum. Uh, so there's a museum out there I want to go to. It's that crazy man with the curly mustache, and he did all the crazy... Uh, oh, you, you know who I'm talking about? That it, they have a big old museum out there in uh, Sarasota, Tampa area. Of um, uh, the only thing I can think uh, of is uh, the Mexican, the little cartoon guy. The um, oh, I'll well, while you're trying to think, I'll, I'll say you know, back out. in the day when I traveled a lot for uh, heavy equipment business. Mm. One day when I was in Sarasota, I went and went through it. I didn't go through it. I think as much as you guys did, but it, you just Guy Austria. with a mustache. <laughs> yeah, I need, well, you know, yeah. the Mexican cartoon character. Um, he did that Christ on the Cross painting that I love so much. Oh, no, I don't know that. Um, the, uh, uh, he was a crazy man. He was, uh, um, oh, let me, so, go, so say something brilliant. Does he know well, that Christ <laughs> isn't on the cross now? <laughs> While we were down there, also Tuesday night, we went to oh. a live Kenny G concert. Yeah. Oh, now that would have been a highlight. Yeah. That guy can, the notes are so pure, they're so right on. Right. But, well, it still amazes me, and I've been listening to him for, for years. 30 years at least. And uh, someone that took a very odd classical instrument and has actually made it cool. Yeah, <laughs> for a third. Year. Uh, uh, the the, uh, the soprano artist. saxophone is yeah. You yeah. never. Soprano. That's not what you would normally pick as a solo instrument. No. But, uh, boy, um, almost like you being a solo bassoonist. <laughs> <laughs> um, the artist I was thinking about was Salvador Dali. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah, and he's I got the, he's got he that painting of a crucifixion that I love. Yeah. You know where you're you're looking mm -hmm. down from above Christ, looking down, mm -hmm. and then you see this whole sea and stuff beneath him, this kind of spiritual realm underneath. Um, he, uh, I went to, I actually went to a Salvador Dali. Uh, it was kind of a temporary museum that had been set up in a conference, and then. Um, because I just wanted to see that crucifixion painting. The thing's like enormous. It's massive inside. And uh, so I would, I would go out to Dolly. Just you think he's a believer? No, I, I, I don't. I have no idea why he did, he did the painting just because. Well, religion. I mean, he might be a religionist. I, I no. <laughs> I don't. I don't get. Now. Don't condemn me for some of the other stuff he's, <laughs> he's done. Uh, and you know that may, that actually brings up a good question. I mean, is this despite the fact the artist is probably not a believer? If he did a painting of a crucifixion you really like, is it okay to hang that up in your house? I think so. Uh, is it okay to have a Salvador Dali painting just, in your house of a crucifixion? You just get a little color and scratch out his name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that uh, you know the expression of it. Um, you know the creativity of it and what i think is interesting is the um the creative and some the creative mind of a lost person you know they can be very very creative and produce some very yeah. interesting things. oh yeah <laughs> all that depression and sadness and everything mm -hmm. can drive a man to do some pretty creative stuff that's yeah. that is a truth well it's, sure. it's also interesting to me is i've been to several museums i've been to the reich's museum in yeah. amsterdam which yeah. was you know it's it's chock full of uh, art done by the masters. But what amazes me, a lot of these artists, none of them really particularly professed being Christians or anything of the sort. And yet the, the principal theme is Madonna and Child, right. the crucifixion. I right. mean, it, right. it, <laughs> for not being religious, they certainly right. focused on a religious theme. Right, and the, uh, I mean, the, that whole period, the Renaissance, yeah. some of the most phenomenal works, I just love those artworks. Yeah. Christian art is amazing. I'm yeah. You know, uh, right now, Gwen and I are going through some, some books, some of the time we're spending together, going through some books by Ken LaFollette. 
Yep. And uh, yep. he opens up his first book by telling you he's an atheist. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, as a historian, as one who, you know, all mm -hmm. these books are historical fiction, but he goes through it. Mm -hmm. He nails the aspect of what religion was, what Catholicism was, what Protestantism was, mm -hmm. and, uh, and who the Puritans were. Mm -hmm. And he so clearly separates what they mm. believe. I can't believe the guy's not a believer. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Especially when you read something. Uh, one of his novels was The Way of All Flesh. Yeah, I haven't read that uh, one yet. Yeah. Or we haven't listened to that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that just sounds so appealing to me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, hey, let's, we got, hey, we got a bunch of links you know, you uh, beneath the, the video. Podcast, but huh? you didn't do? I didn't do the links. Uh, no, we you got, didn't do Open Chat Friday. Yeah. Uh, we got, yes, we, I, I did. You no, know, you didn't do the chat Friday. I, I, I did. I mentioned that at the beginning. I did. Did you? You were, you were here, too. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's questionable. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hey, uh, we got beneath the video. Uh, you know, just look down. Click show more. Got a ton of links down there. And they are good a, links. Including a link to, uh, and tuning, uh, to my book, Empowered by His Grace. I'm so excited about that. Get a copy of the book. Let me tell you what the, the uh, this is what we're all about. This is about Amen. you coming to understand what God made you in. In Christ that moment you believe this is what I want you to know I want you to see yourself as God sees you in his son and let that be a cause of joy for the rest of your life and if you have no idea what I'm talking about get a copy of the book I'm telling you it is it is um, identification is everything you need to to discern properly how to walk through this life until it's uh, until it's all over I want you to check that book out uh, we've also got links to all kinds of goodies including a uh, you know, a link to a, a page where you could, uh, there's Greg Reeser's digital, great, uh, radio. digital radio station, Grace Messages 24-7. I love me some Greg Reeser. I love him. I love me some Delilah. Amen. And, uh, praise the Lord for their willingness to put this together so that we can, you can listen to Grace Messages 24-7 if yeah. you want. Um, we've got uh, places where you could get hard copies of books, places where you could study to join the, a link to a, a, where you could study to join the ministry, including Grace School of oh, the Bible. Oh, we recommend a link to it. Sharon McKenty's wonderful uh, Easy Believer page called uh, where you can find a Grace Church near you. Support the mission field, Grace Beyond Borders. We've got some saints out there in some pretty uh, hot regions of the world right now. They could use your support. We've got saints really risking their necks to get the word of grace out. And uh, so Richard Church and the those fine people over there could use your support. Amen. There's a uh, place where you could take David Reed's Gospel Quiz, which is totally epic. A place where you could download 6,000 Grace Books articles and charts from my own personal Google Drive. I recommend doing it folder by folder rather than doing it as, as a lump. Uh, the, the new April Berean Searchlights out. Uh, 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 Deborah Johnson's new Just a Minute uh, yeah, newsletter is that. out. Um, you've got, um, uh, um, and you've got a bunch of new uh, podcasts too. Carl Coates. Yes, he has a podcast. Carl. I've got a link to that, Carl, uh, w which is the Wooden Bible uh, Fellowship uh, podcast. Uh, Charlie McQuillan has a new podcast called uh, Crucified. Uh, Josh Trelecki has a podcast called Holy Appetizer, which always makes me hungry. <laughs> um, Brian, don't forget Brian and, Brian and Becky, my beautiful, beautiful saints have uh, they've got a they've got their own Just Grace It podcast also. Mm. Man, it's just, there's just there's got too much stuff going on out there. Every time I hear this, I think of what it was like 10, 12, 13 years ago. I, I honestly love these people too much. Amen. I I wish they were all here, honestly. You know what I heard? Um, uh, that Greg actually had, on his twenty four seven, one of his podcasts, uh, he spends 12 hours each on a message. So two messages for 24 hours. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> that guy can bring it now. Now, I think, you know, what we for should long do time. is next time Greg Reeser comes down, we'll do another four or five hour podcast. And then next time he comes down, we'll do another four or five hour podcast. And then after two, after a few trips, we'll have, he'll have three podcasts that'll cover 24 hours. <laughs> you, know, you can have 24 hours of <laughs> Greg on, on the Grace Life podcast. And the thing is, you know, he doesn't really repeat himself. No, no. not like me. I'm terrible about it. Oh, yeah. Greg's yeah. really good about that. Oh, he you know, manages to come up with new, new stuff to say yeah. for the entire hour and a half he's talking. He is on, on video what I am in writing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Long-winded. Yeah. Well, you are wordy, and you. Hey, wordy. And, but we love that, you know. It, I love that about. For Greg. me, mm. I, I like the extra word sometimes because in the 
uh, minutia of the words that we have well, here, and I, I get an understanding. I know I repeat uh, myself in the book, and it was always intentional. I don't, I never, yeah. and I never felt that's easy. There, there is a distinct advantage in using many, many synonyms because eventually you're going <laughs> you're to you're hit on one that they actually know what the meaning of the word is. <laughs> hey, uh, how do you feel about adverbs? About like, uh, with a, yeah. words with an ly at the end. Do you? Yeah. Are, there's a lot of people. Really, say, Joel? Okay really? With that? Yeah, you, yeah. You How, I, I can think of a good one right now. How about holy, <laughs> <laughs> godly, uh, yeah. godly? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I like them. To tell you the truth, <laughs> I swear that, we'll get around they, to the uh, comments. I promise you. Are they? Uh, <laughs> are they a no-no in writing? Yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, uh, oh, really? they, they, they get frowned upon. But I think if you, you, I think they're okay. But you use them sparingly, and you use it with real pizzazz, so that it gives it a quite a good punch to it. Mm. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with them. It's just, and you're going to an extreme to say to never use them. What you got to do is use them wisely. You got to use it in a place where it's got a maximum impact. That's that's how you do it. The only thing I'm against is the word that. Uh, I try to cut that out as often as possible. People overuse the word that. It's like it's everywhere. You don't need it. And you, you, and you, don't you, need you it. often don't yeah. need it. Right. I that think. and what? Yeah. What? Right. I think Hal. Uh, you know, I don't. Th I think I told him once before, but I don't think he remembers it. He told me to, you know, I use that too much. And I, you know, I write it's out okay. all my... I it's write okay out when my. you speak, but when you use that too much in writing, it really gets... Right. You, you notice, and I never noticed it, and it was a friend of mine at the Disney no, has pointed that out. You're using that way too much. Cut out all these that's and you don't need... I'm like, oh, yeah. it just sounds so much better. When I go back through some of my older notes, the, the, my primary... <sighs> Revision is taking out the words that. <laughs> uh, Just don't need them. Totally agree. Uh, let's see who's in the live uh, in the live chat. How are you guys doing this morning? Chat. Finally, you know. It's hey, we got Bill Barron's in the house. I got links to Bill Barron's. He's talking about the Hebrew tribulation. He's up to like part what seven and eight now. Yes. Um, yeah, you're going to get Ted the, Fellows. Ted the, Fellows. They got a new live stream. You can actually. They look fantastic. Uh, it is crystal clear. He's never, and you can, you can watch him live stream now. Um, Are very excited live about that. Clearer than our live stream. Oh, it looks about as good. It looks about as good. Uh, Hours though. In particular, yes, yeah, right. That's right. Good, good. In particular, you can get a good idea of what Ted's actually wearing now. Because it was all kind of blurry and fuzzy <laughs> before. Now you can really see. No, that doesn't match at all, Ted. Did a... Uh, <laughs> so, I got a question. Does Ted wear platform shoes? Uh, I wonder. Mm. Does he have a stool behind that pulpit? Yeah. Um, I love me some Ted Fellows. I couldn't uh, be more excited. I think he is must-see Grace TV. May I say that Ted Fellows was one of the original graduates of Grace right. School of the Bible. Uh, we got Damon Chen in the house. How are you, hey, Kate Anderson? Damon. Hey, Kate, give Roger a great big hug and a kiss for us. Is Kate here? Yep. That's hey, right. we got we got Romans three twenty five in here. We got Bible verses talking to us now. That's right. I love Romans three twenty five. <laughs> Hello from Malaysia. It's Friday night right here. Oh. Have a blessed Friday, everyone. Well, it is fantastic having you here. It started out pretty having good. a having a Friday night, spending it with us, my sweetheart. We will pray for you. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I you know you could have a regular Friday night and then watch this later. Yep. <laughs> love you already. You That's keep right. on keeping on out there in Malaysia, and uh, it is truly our honor to Did have you here and i mean that sincerely did it's you go beautiful. to malaysia no i went to thailand right uh hey look at that crosswork ministries oh that beautiful was talking about him the beautiful i um I, I i like it better when i talk about him behind his back I'd, yeah uh but uh greg i love you man when are you going to come down here come on hey come you know, on, hey, you, know um, on, you know strelecki's going to be here uh may 19th 20th 20 something something like that uh, you need to come down here too. We'll have That's a big right. old epic party. Uh, I love we'll you. Get hey, a bigger get... table. We'll widen out the the thing, and we could have fourteen of the best grace people in the world here. Uh, I give uh, Delilah a great big hug and a kiss for me. Please I do love that. her to death. Uh, order the book, and Brian's new one. Yep, Brian. Um, uh, Brian, uh, did you? See, did, hey, Hal, did you see Brian's video yesterday? No, um, I've seen it twice. I've seen um, it is it is totally epic. Brian um, responded to Trey seriously. It took him a long time to think about it, and even after he made the video, he took a long time to think about whether or not he was going to post it. And um, you know, and I told I told Brian you know, when we had a number of conversations, and I told Brian I was like, dude, 
you know, some people felt he shouldn't respond at all. And I said, the problem is not with responding. It's if respond. you're going to respond, how are you going to do it? Okay. You've got to make sure you can't go down that same path that he went down. You know, being all vitriolic and nasty and tearing people down. That, that's off the table. You Preach gotta, the doctrine. You have to make sure you respond with grace, and that's hard. And how do you do that? That's by the question. speaking the truth in love. And uh, I thought he, I mean, just did by avoiding it? vitriol, just calmly explaining the etymological research that he did, um, I thought it was a wonderful job. And I think, too... This whole discussion about dictionaries is a good one, and I'm with Brian a thousand percent on that whole subject. There is nothing is it, wrong with dictionaries. Yeah. Especially Webster's. Well, Webster's got some issues. but Well, he's much. got some, but everybody does. It's the 1828. Yeah. Just because you use a, uh, a, a dictionary, we do promote the Webster's 1828. Because it's the definitions are closer to what they were using in the 1600s. Now, tell me if I tell me if, if you, what you guys think about this, because because exactly. I think because uh, if. Brian makes the warning that, look, if you're going to say that the Bible is its own dictionary, and then you look at a word, you look at the context, and then you make up the definition of the word, you know, then all of a sudden everybody's making up definitions for words uh, based on whatever perception that they have, and there's no, and then you just basically have total chaos. And you have, and, and it's almost like, for me, like a trend that's out there now. One plus one doesn't have to be two. One plus one could be whatever you want it to be now. Uh, anything can be whatever you want it to mean. Nothing has to have any meaning anymore. It can be just whatever you want it to mean, which is, seems to have blended it, blended into our grace movement. Now suddenly, words don't have to mean anything anymore. It can mean whatever you want it to mean by looking at the context and the first reference in Scripture and all that stuff. See, that's it's not to say the Bible does not define its own because words it because many, it does with the context certainly. Mm -hmm. But that's, that doesn't mean to the exclusion of, of Webster's. And, uh, um, and Brian looked at all of these dictionaries that existed at the time the King oh. James came out. <laughs> you know, he didn't just look yeah, at I've Webster's. He that. looked at all this. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And, yeah. and all of these dictionaries all coinciding with each other. So you could reasonably conclude that, you know, after all that research, yeah. this is what the word means. Does I, it not? Am, am I, do, do you disagree with that at all, Hal, or? No, uh, studying the etymology of any word is <laughs> is necessary. How do you communicate if you don't uh, have a, a common base of reference of what words mean? Right, right. Be in fact, that's one of the uh, one of the uh, uh, tools of cults. They take words and redefine them. Right, right. Which, and, yeah. I'm so that, sorry. Go ahead, Pastor. I was just says, yeah. That's and you know that <laughs> you really want to confuse the discussion. It's like talking two different languages. Yeah, I totally agree. In fact, um, there there was a um, you, you talk about taking a perfectly good word, and now all of a sudden giving it a totally different slant and meaning to it. Uh, there was an article that reminds me. There was an article in um, Harbinger's Daily that was about the whole deconstruction idea going on in Christianity. For example, the the uh, in here in this first paragraph, they said um, a trendy new hashtag tempts. Christians to look wise in the world's eyes. Quote, there are 293,026 posts on Instagram utilizing the hashtag deconstruction, reported apologetics writer Alyssa Childers earlier this year. The vast majority are from people who've deconverted from Christianity become progressive uh, Christians, embraced all this woke nonsense, rejected core historic doctrines of faith, and are on a mission to crush the white Christian patriarchy. The deconstruction movement recruits from the ranks of Christian celebrities, musicians, and young impressionable evangelicals. De and here, this is a senior fellow uh, with uh, FRC Center, uh, for Biblical Worldview, Dr. Owen Strachan said, uh, deconstruction is not sound. Deconstruction will ultimately lead to destruction itself. Uh -huh. And I have, since we started the podcast, watched over the last two years, uh, Christian musicians. There was a member of um, uh, the, the Jesus Freaks guys, what, um, uh, DC Talk. Uh, the um, uh, member of DC Talk deconstructed his faith and suddenly became an unbeliever, and there were a lot of and that hit made the news, and a lot of other people started doing that. And um, the whole and so then suddenly after a couple of years of this, the whole idea of deconstruction 
has become this whole, I, his, is suddenly equated with becoming an unbeliever. And, and I grew up, I'm, I'm a writer, I grew up with, in writing groups, we spent our days deconstructing stories. You take the story down and you look at the, at the meaning of that story, that's deconstruction. Deconstruction is a word I love. Yeah. That's what we do it's, every time we study yeah, scripture. You break happen. down a It'd verse a and you look for the meaning in that verse. Again, the purpose is not demolition. The, the, the purpose is to uh, study the details. I, I think of, by way of, of an illustration, uh, some people think deconstruction is to demolish. Not necessarily. No. I remember my son as a kid, anytime it, we would give him something new that was mechanical, you know what the first thing he did with it? Well, it take apart. it apart. He pulled it apart, yes, not to just not to destroy it, to understand it, to understand it, and then he would learn more about it right. and and putting it back together, and he would understand how it operates. Am I wrong? The very essence of being a Berean is to deconstruct what you heard. I believe that I, to I be agree. absolutely you know, true. Yeah. The very essence of doing that, and 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 mm -hmm. I would argue it is there is nothing wrong with. A uh, Christian saying, there's something not working here, mm -hmm. and I need to deconstruct everything. And so that you go back to the mm -hmm. basics. You go back to understanding the meaning of, say, the cross, the meaning of everything else, yeah. and try to understand where, yeah. you, where you've gone wrong. And, and trying to understand the word as you deconstruct it, I mean, you can't fully deconstruct it and come to conclusion apart from the context. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, it, that, that, that all helps. And to think that the context destroys, I mean, we do it all the time. That's totally. exactly, you know, we... Uh, um, we prefer to understand the things that we are looking at in depth by deconstructing it around the, and let mm -hmm. the context right. help us define it. But I have no problem going to a dictionary now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There well, is absolutely nothing mm -hmm. wrong with using a dictionary to help us in no. our uh, understanding. I remember as a teenager, I was extremely frustrated as I was coming into Right to Vision. I had no teacher. Yeah. So all we had was books that, that we would read. And uh, going to a denominational church, I was extremely frustrated with the Gospels. I hated eschatology. Right, yeah. right. Absolutely hated it. Absolutely right. hated it. And at that particular time, I, for my own means of study, I determined that from then on, I was going to study the scriptures from an adversarial point of view. Right, right. <laughs> and I have always done that. And of course, right. not that I felt like I was smarter than the scriptures or anything, but it, it, if I could pick something apart, it, <laughs> it couldn't be much to it. Right, I, uh, right. And, and so I, I approached it from that perspective and i found in many cases i gained a lot more enlightenment by Amen. being adversarial right. than you know because when you're not adversarial you have a tendency to gloss over things right you read it devotionally right and you can't study your body yes you still read your bible devotionally that's right. not what i'm not that's saying a different time it's a different that, type of study that's a different kind of study but you can't read and study and study your Bible only devotionally. Right, right. Because uh, you can find something devotional just about every Anywhere. verse in the Bible. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. That doesn't deepen your understanding. Exactly. Of the context, and uh, it doesn't help you exegete the passage exactly. of Scripture. I, I, I would imagine that the vast majority of these people who have, uh, these famous Christians who have deconstructed and became unbelievers are going, went through, are going through what you went through about the Gospels in the sense that they were extremely frustrated with it. Mm -hmm. There are promises in the Gospels that are clearly not being uh, fulfilled right now. You know, ask and ye shall receive, two or more gathered in my name, mm -hmm. all this stuff. And so now they're suddenly going, what's going on here? What's wrong? Mm -hmm. The answer is not, in, in, in fact, the, all, the problem that they may also be facing are just blatant contradictions in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so they <laughs> <laughs> they feel like the answer to the way that they're going to try to somehow figure out these problems that they're having is to just deconstruct everything. And in the whole process, they've just concluded, for whatever reason, the Bible contradicts itself. The Bible doesn't fulfill the promises given to me in the Gospels. And thus, I'm becoming an unbeliever. That Amen. might be the process. Yeah. That, what they need is right division yeah. is what they need. That's what they what need that, is the, is the mystery it. is what That's they right. need. Sometimes they need something <laughs> even simpler than that. They just need language skills. <laughs> <laughs>
because they, they take and they read a passage of scripture and they don't know what the words mean. Right. Yeah. And, and then they come up with a conclusion about the meaning of the verse when they don't even understand the meaning of the words. Right. And you can't right. understand. Right. Right. You, you can't get from one to the uh, to the other. Amen. You, you've got to understand the word. I'll give you I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was at a particular Christian university. Um, Up in South Carolina? In South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina. That's right. We'll nail it, down. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't Stetson or Clemson or any of those. <laughs> I mean, uh, Clemson or any of those. It, it's this other school. But I ended up in a lot of discussions over particularly the word repentance. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing to me. Uh, of course, <laughs> they would say, well, I, use, I have a, a Young's Concordance. And I said, well, I have a Strong's Concordance. And they have two different, <laughs> they have two different uh, meanings of the word. Yeah. You know, right. regret, sorrow, turn from sin. Uh, can it be used in that sense? Yes. yes. Uh, it can be used in that sense. But the vast majority of time, since, since it's God that's doing the repenting of Scripture, he's certainly not sorrowing over his All sin. Right. Thank you, brother. Uh, it, it's a change, of, a change of mind. And... Just one word like that can dr dramatically affect your theology. Totally agree. Absolutely. And so I can remember a discussion with a, with a fellow that we both knew here in Pine Hills. And he was absolutely weeping because when I, he asked me when I was saved, and that was at age 12, you know, did I weep over my sin? Was I sorry for my sin? I said, no. No, I was just glad I was saved. And he was convinced that I wasn't saved. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Based upon the theology of what he understood right. about, uh, about repentance. repentance. Right. And, and I said, well, why, why wouldn't you be sorry that you were a sinner? I said, well, if, you know, if I was born with a, with a, a cleft palate or if I was born with a, a physical physical deformity of some type should i feel guilty about that right <laughs> i didn't ask to be born with sin it's not something that 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 i created it was condition i was born with amen did i want to be a sinner no no but uh sorry no mm -mm. not and not in the sense that they meant well the and it's i and uh, there's a distinction between Godly sorrow and repentance, because Paul says, "Godly sorrow worketh, worketh repentance." repentance. Yeah. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. so you, there, even if, you, if even if you carefully yeah. look at the look at the verse of uh, was it uh, first uh, Second Corinthians seven ten? Yeah. You, um, you ca even God Himself gives you a distinction between being that's sorry. Right. That's right. And mm -hmm. repentance. Right. Uh, I, I, mean, I hate to go against what we just said about dictionaries, but you know, you kind of get a little bit of a definition there. <laughs> Well, it's like any other tool. Right, a direction about what God's mm -hmm. thinking about repentance. Yeah. Well, that, and that's the one thing that our King James Bible does that, that I don't know of any other translation that does do. It, in a lot of senses, it is self-defining. Right. And, they, and they'll do that if, you know, by uh, using synonyms. Uh, even when you have the same word, you know, right. but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Both believe and faith are the same Greek word. Right. Why translate it? Why not say faith, faith, or believe, believe? Why believe faith? <laughs> right. there, there's, there's a method Some, something to do with right. context. Yeah. Right. You think so? Yeah. Um. <laughs> The, uh, uh, but I love that. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, hey, we got um, uh, Justin Cox in the house. Great you know to see I love you. Justin Cox. He's we got Chris man. Nelson here, you oh, beautiful yeah, brother. Please. Hey, you remember those texts the other day? Just tell me how I'm doing today. Uh, he said, Chris <laughs> says, good morning, uh, saints. Outstanding list of our true identity in Christ. Amen. Love it more all the time. You and me both. You, you know, and me I, both. I rejoiced the day I was saved. I rejoiced again the day I began to understand right division, but I rejoiced exceedingly when I began to understand who I am in Christ. Amen. That is a fantastic mm -hmm. message. Same, same for me. Absolutely. Uh, Amy Stewart's in the house, you beautiful woman. Hey, What's Amy. going on? Hey, give that hubby a great big hug and kiss for all of us, too, which means three hugs and three kisses. Um, uh, Amy Stewart says a question from Galatians 4, 17 to 18. Yes. Who is they that would exclude you, and how is it 
do you pos- do you suppose that ye might affect them? Well, that just sounds like an excellent, excellent question. I'm lo- I'm loving it. Uh, I have to get over here. Galatians four seventeen and eighteen. Um, uh, and I'll just start up here. Uh, verse 16, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. Um, And then he talks about how he travails in birth again until Christ be formed in you and how he desires to be present with him. Um, What do you guys think about those verses? Well, I I think the they are the, I've always just said they were the Judaizers that followed Paul. And I think it's interesting, Galatians, they never really question the justification of the Galatians, but they, they, uh, they attack the sanctification issue of, of them. What they wanted them to do was now that they were saved to go back under the law. And uh, Paul says in 15, where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you had plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. The, what were the Galatians doing? They were, they were rejoicing in who they were in Christ. And they, the Judaizers, came in and started pounding and into, you know, pecking away take, to take away the joy of their salvation. They say, no, you can't just be happy. You can't just be joyous. You have to do this for God's continued favor. And that's very, very destructive. Hmm. Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Yeah. Who's the enemy? They are. Um. Yeah. I was just going to say zeal. <laughs> we yeah. should all have zeal yeah. of some type. And, of course, you use Judaizers. I, I, think, I just call them legalists. Yeah. And that's true, too. Their zeal was the law. And he said, they zealously affect you. Well, what is it they wanted? They wanted to make converts, if you will, to people that were zealous about the law as they were. That's the reason he said, they zealous you affect you, but not well. Not well. You know, you're, it's not well when you put somebody back under the law. Uh, you make yourself, as Paul said, a transgressor again, yeah, if, right. if I do that. <laughs> and he said, yea, they would exclude you. And Well, how would they exclude you? Well, from the blessings of grace. Amen. By putting you under law, they, they exclude you that ye might affect them. In other words, they're... <laughs> They're polishing their fingernails right. when they've got a convert. Right, right. I think you what know, they're doing is deconstructing yeah. something right. when, yeah. the, when they come in yeah. right. and deconstructing it in uh, a bad way. Right. I mean, it seems... Uh, I'm sorry, did you... No, you know, that's... Oh, I interrupted uh, him. Because yeah, it, it seems like in these two verses you have this process with these Judaizers. They come in, they, they zealously affect you. They come in with all this love and affection for you and, 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 and act as if they really ha- care about your well-being. And then, but they once, they, once they get in good with you, then they alienate you from the message that you had once embraced. They alienate you from the grace of God, alienate you from Paul and everything else, and get you under legalism mm-hmm. that you might affect them. And they're doing it all not, for, not really for your benefit or because it's the truth, but... As Hal said, they're wanting to they're wanting to glorify they themselves want the because that's what of be, having made a convert. That is that is the very essence of legalism is yeah. glorifying mm-hmm. self yeah. by how well you are obeying the law. Mm-hmm. You know, legalism can pop up anywhere, and you know, I I caution it, uh, and I, I try to never be legalistic, and and sometimes the hardest place not to be legalistic is in our own life. Uh, because there is a certain level of performance mm-hmm. that we want from ourselves. Right. But yeah. I, I tell you, every, there is no place that I believe that legalism is profitable. Yeah. And so we just need to exclude it, yeah. exclude that from our lives. I think also within the same context, you would also say that, uh, uh, that the same thing is true of militancy. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Militancy is its own form of legalism. You know, you can be militant about grace. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> and and, ze- and zealously be. affect people in the wrong way. Right, totally. Taking them in the wrong direction. Totally. So uh, it's not just legalism. It, it can be 
uh, carried away with your own passions about anything. Right. Right. Uh, this is, and notice this is effect with an A, not effect with an E. It's effect with an yeah, A, which is effect. emotional, mm-hmm. not not so much the cause and effect, mm-hmm. but the emotional reaction to the mm-hmm. way they have treated you, come in amongst you, mm-hmm. and uh, and suddenly and subtly subverted your minds away from the gospel. Of Look grace. at our writer speak to us, boy. That was a, that was great. <laughs> Um, effect, I don't know anything effective. else to say about these verses. No, that, I think, and uh, I thank you for bringing those up. I think they're very, they, very crucial verses in understanding the Book yeah. of Galatians. But yeah, I mean, there's the, there is that that modus operandi of the legalizers, and and all it does is it, it, it is excludes you from the true uh, um, excludes you from the true gospel, the true uh, program of grace. And, uh, and they do it all with emotional manipulation. Um, that was a great question, man. I really, I really enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty legalistic about the gospel. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I think there's one. <laughs> uh, can, it, do you think it would be okay to impose uh, uh, kind of rules for yourself in the age of grace? Like, I don't drink. <laughs> That's a rule I have for myself. Um, no, I think that, uh, would that, that... Would that mean you putting yourself under uh, legalism? No, yeah. that's just the practical lessons that I've learned from experience. Exactly. Yeah, from <laughs> personal failure. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. plenty of personal failures to yeah. learn from. I mean, all you've got to do is Dr. Phil that. Uh, how's that, how, how's how that, that how work, that work for, for you? Yeah. 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 Exactly. No, I, I, in fact, I think um, there are rules of grace. I mean, it, it says just because we live in the dispensation of grace, there are rules mm. to live by in the dispensation of grace. Mm. And if you step outside of them, You've broken the issues or the rules of grace. So. Yeah. yeah, I had to cover the uh, cut, uh, ordinances that Paul mentions in Second Corinthians eleven a couple weeks ago, and uh, you know, uh, rule. And I mean, I'm looking up. I'm looking it up in the Greek. I'm looking at Webster's, and I just have rules given by authority, ordinances, because there are rules mm-hmm. in grace. Mm-hmm. A, a rule, don't go under legalism. Don't go back right. under the law. That's, That's a right. rule. That's a rule. You know? <laughs> is, it, is it ever okay to be unkind? <laughs> Never. <laughs> no. <laughs> is, is, it, is, it, is it ever okay to, to cause strife? Is it no. okay to not forgive? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. All those things, are, and they are, you, we call them rules, you call them principles, you call them whatever. Rule and principle, in this case, is the same thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, you had that rules of grace. You actually did a few messages called rules of grace. Now, I've been I thinking think. about you know redoing some of there those. Are, it, and that really is true. There, are there not rules about the structures given in a local assembly? Mm-hmm. Uh, rules about el- eligibility for certain mm-hmm. uh, roles. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. Rules about how to study. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Amy Stewart says we are forgiven. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's right. That's you know, right. at eight years old, I didn't have the, uh, you know, I, I trusted Christ. I knew all my sins had been forgiven. I knew heaven was my home. But the forgiven part really <laughs> didn't understand that until I got older and realized all those things I was currently doing, yep. I'd also been forgiven of those. Hey, we got Frank Ledoux in the house, you know beautiful I love brother. brother. Frank. Says, good morning, dear saints from snowing Glidden, Wisconsin. Oh, we had a blizzard and uh, a blizzard of our own come through. It was seventy when we went to when we got up this morning. Oh, it was supposed to get down to the fifties. I hear. I'm so excited about yeah, that winter second season of winter. Uh, Greg says, "Praise the Lord." Amy Stewart says, "Light affliction in that chair." That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. I got to keep telling affliction. myself that. Susan Desjardins is in the house. How yes. are you? Hey, Susan. She says, "Good morning. This is the day the Lord hath made." That's and right. I shall be glad in it, and I shall rejoice. I don't remember what he said. I yep. shall rejoice. Yep. Desjardins. She says, um, "Oh, Desjardins. Thank you very much for that, Desjardins. I can remember that. Can you? Uh, not you did it from last time to this time. Not more than twenty-four hours, but I can remember <laughs> that." Um, uh, Chris says Salvador daily. <laughs> I don't want to see him daily. No, no, Salvador daily. Yep, I love that. I love that crucifixion painting. Um, in fact, I have an outline for. A, I've long wanted to do a documentary on the Christian art. Call it Christian art rightly divided. Um, <laughs> That's good. And the um, and and go through some uh, uh, breakdowns of the uh, uh, Christian art. Where's it at here? 
uh, Christian art rightly divided. And a lot of questions to ask about Christian art that does not, that, that you, you never really never really think to ask like you know do you really need to know the uh faith of the artist in order to appreciate the art and we were you know you have a there's there are you know uh before uh, hitler became awful he did a lot of painting yeah and some of those paintings were madonna and child they weren't very good i don't think anybody would buy them but yeah, he actually good. did paint there's one painting of uh, mary holding a blonde jesus weirdly enough and they're just <laughs> in the background is the kingdom golden kingdom and you know i might hang it in the bathroom or something but i mean if but still if you just looking at it you'd be like eh, it's okay but you if know, you knew hitler thing. did that painting would you hang that up in your house no nobody was gonna would hang that up in their house well you know, you know i look at some of that renaissance art and i i i, I have a hard time appreciating it it looks like a kid at kindergarten in watercolor they're just not that good right well but there are some very good ones art is like a christian taking a stand on the truth of scripture <laughs> you have to draw the line somewhere you gotta draw them. <laughs> you ought to quote that we can quote joel hayes on that one <laughs> that was going to be the opening line to uh to the to the to the documentary uh hey uh good morning to you cliff uh steve rugged cliff how you steve doing brother steve rugged uh, Persis says, uh, hi, Chris, uh, Salvador Dali. He definitely was not saved. No, he was not. You got that right. I don't think so. Maybe if we're lucky, maybe he got saved. But well, no, you know. he, there's no evidence of it anywhere in, in his life in any way, shape, or form. But I love that painting. Am I wrong to love that painting because he was just so crazy, you know? Um, you know, the beautiful thing about justification, we have no, from everything we know about him, it was, he wasn't saved. Yeah. But we do know, it, I mean, that painting came from somewhere. And I, I trust, because if there was ever a moment in time he believed Christ died for his sin, even he was saved. Uh, we got Lori Loves Green in the house, you beautiful woman. That's How are right. you, my sweet Alabama sister? She says, grace and peace, y'all. Moise. <laughs> y'all. You know, we need some personal appearances by Lori. She says, listening while working on my fence. Praise the Lord. Amen. Turn it up loud so the neighbors can hear. Uh, Persis uh, 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 ordered uh, Joel's book and Brian's work on the Day of the Lord. Yes. I ordered, Amen. I ordered Day of the Lord um, not too long ago because I need to read that book uh, in preparation for uh, us my my case against uh, their position <laughs> uh. <laughs> in the next series, which scares me to death. Uh, um, that, I got that a is one message I'm going to go through with the, with the two pastors in fine with a fine comb. Here's the uh, thing: I, I can't get Brian's stuff in PDF, can I? Yeah, yeah, that's on the zip drive. Um, in fact, uh, the Day of the Lord thing is on the zip drive. Okay, too, I'll get so. it. Why I'll does it, it scare you to death? <laughs> Have you ever been interrogated by David Reed? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever been interrogated by Brian about anything? David and Brian uh, have never thought I was worth enough to interrogate. <laughs> <laughs> but I so I got to have all my I just got to make sure all my dots eyes dotted, no. my T's crossed. No, and the Lord has not it is given sound, us sound solid exegesis. He has not I given us the exam. spirit of fear. Yeah, I don't fear the truth. Um, but I have I have read most of the Day of the Lord. And I'm not. Uh, uh, um, oh. I'm not a. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that position about. But I'm no, gonna, I'm not either. Um, I'm not going to fight over it. I'm not going to fight with him over it either. No, but, no. Uh, Cliff Matthews says, uh, I'm "Howdy." I'm not preaching against it. Cliff says, "Howdy, pastors. How Freddie Bear, Joel, Bill, and I hope pa our, uh, Pastor Bob is doing fine. Bob is coming home today. Amen. Hey, Pastor Bob's Bobby. coming out of the hospital. He's coming home today. I'm very excited about that. You know, when they said he had a stroke, I, my whole thoughts and my prayers was, you know, that it wasn't something he was not going to be able to recover from. And oh, yeah. uh, praise the Lord, I because he's way too young to have to get out. They of the were yeah, they were worried about him swallowing and stuff. There was all, there were all kinds of stuff going on with Bob. Um, Physical therapy is a great thing. They can overcome so many things today. Um, I remember when my uncle Lee had a stroke. Persis what says a blessing that he's 
Go had nothing. Sorry, That's Patrick. okay. You know, go ahead. I don't want to talk it over. Yeah. No, no, I no. proved that over and over again. No, say it again. You, you say <laughs> I just, Patrick. when Uncle Lee had his stroke, I mean, yeah. very concerned. But even that night in the hospital, yeah. he had. Uh, he was paralyzed on one side one day, and the next day they went in there with a little vacuum cleaner thing, slurped it out the, the right. clot, and he was back. Back. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, Persis says, loving Charlie's podcast. Yes. Uh, the only problem, the only problem with this podcast, not enough impersonations. Roche. Yeah. Well, I'd like to have a little more Rochelle on there. <laughs> if, you know, you can see in that podcast every reason why we all love Charlie. That's uh, right. I think he's uh, he is phenomenal. There are people are telling me that you got to get him on the podcast. I would rather have him. You know, when we upgrade the live stream and be able to see his face because uh, you got to see him when he does impersonations because right, it's yeah. hilarious. He's like Charlie um, Chaplin. Yeah, I love Charlie. Love Rochelle. Um, and. Uh, and, and uh, th so that podcast uh, called Crucified is uh, it's it is uh, it's addictive. Charlie's uh, Charlie can be addictive, and I uh, I think there should be literally a million Grace podcasts out there. Amen. I think we should overwhelm Spotify, mm -hmm. overwhelm the world, <laughs> screaming yeah. about God's yeah. grace. And I have no problem promoting a million Grace podcasts. Me either. <laughs> now again, when you and uh, your uh, fellow roommate came up with the idea of the grace life podcast did you oh. ever dream that it would be no. uh, copied no duplicated? i don't know this. Uh, I, it hasn't been it hasn't been imitated because nobody else is doing the interaction with the live chats like we do well yeah. that's true it's uh, basically sermons recorded in a in a closet or something well you know? <laughs> there's 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 that and then there's o there's only one joel hayes too so yeah well there's uh, only one hal beckenmeyer praise the lord that's for that. fortunately <laughs> yeah see that's another thing i pray for often is that you know no uh, more Joels and no more Hal. yeah i don't i don't think i, I think uh, the the explosion in podcasting uh was inevitable uh there's mm -hmm. the pastors um i just think that's that would have happened regardless uh pa but persis says um uh, I didn't know Pastor Bob was in the hospital. He w mm -hmm. he is hopefully out going out the door even, even as we as speak. We speak. Uh, um, what else do we have here? Uh, Persa says, "Gee, Joel, I'm an adverbial queen. I had no clue." <laughs> well, I have um oh I can't remember. There's a there's a book uh, that basically say all the things they tell you don't do. You, no, you can do it, but just you got to do it well. You got to do it sparingly. Do it where you can have maximum impact. Um, but yeah, uh, I love adverbs. Uh, and in fact, one of the points uh, I love is where somebody would do an adverb that was uh, contradictory to the word it was supporting, you know, which gave the whole <laughs> thing this really weird flavor to it. Uh, so if you're in writing when you're doing something, I love adverbs that are contradictory to the word it's supporting in some weird way. Um, That's why dangerously I can beautiful. Writer. You know, so, you know, something like, yeah, yeah, um, uh, scare, uh, something like that, uh, where, where there are, there, they kind of differ and they're, they're adver where they conflict each other a little bit. It makes the combination that much more interesting. That's something I always love. See, when I was in, uh, when I was in English and we were going through that, I was either thinking about Gwen or, uh, or football. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think the adverb's got to got to give it a flavor you could not have had without it. Uh, so it, it so if it's just a if it's just a synonym that's boring, but if it's a yeah. antonym of some kind, ooh, now you're looking at an interesting combination of words. Don't get me started. Yeah, you know, some of my uh, <laughs> some of my programs, I'll I'll look at a word and it'll give me an option for synonyms or antonyms. Yeah, uh, but that's just for fiction. I you know I don't mind synony uh, using synonyms. Uh, a, a, an adverb that actually supports the word in a, in a special way when you're doing nonfiction, you're doing exegesis. You know that's that's a whole different ballgame. But for fiction, I like I like I like a, a, a contrasting adverb and and having it used sparingly. But for exegesis, I you know supportive adverbs don't aren't yeah, bad at all. Some people think when we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about fiction. Well, we don't believe that. We believe he's real. Uh, we got Maria J. Martin in the house. Oh. How are you? Oh, and when we were doing so good. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it's good to see you, sweetheart. I'll admit it today. Yeah. I love you. Maria, please come. Someday. Visit someday. Uh, King, James, visit him. King James Believer oh. is in the house. Hello, family hey. in Christ. How are you? 
Amen. The person says, I'm grateful for Philippians 1.6. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. That's do. a great verse. Being confident of this very thing that he, he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. After that, it's not an issue because we'll be in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, what's that good work he's performing in us? Is it not the work of salvation that will be complete when we get that new body? Yeah. You know, in us in, in the sense of teaching uh, the spirit, teaching us, guiding us and teaching us until we perfect our walks until the day of Christ kind of thing. Well, what's he working in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. Yes. <laughs> what is that? What? That's what Second Timothy 2.15 is yeah. all about. Yes. Is, Amen. Is discovering the things that please God. Amen. And, <laughs> and doing those things. Could Paul have just as easily said the day of the Lord here in this verse? <laughs> yeah. It had been all right with me. But I think it makes it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, there's, there's less opportunity for misunderstanding. But, you know, as we think about this, th this puts us in the frame reference of, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of right. his good pleasure. Right. Mm. Um, I mean, are we... Are we not also aspiring to basically embody the very attributes of Christ in our walk and in the outliving of our faith? Like we yeah. are just the image of Christ on this earth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, him working, basically just helping to teach us what it means to be like him in mm -hmm. life, you know? Yeah, there's that. I also think of the idea of the emphasis on our oneness with him yes. yeah for instance if you take you know you look at, at ephesians chapter five you know as, again people go there and they say well that's a marriage passage but it says but i speak concerning christ and the, the church. church amen that's a, that was fantastic and and so and he uses this allegory if you will of marriage and our our union in the church being flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone right and, and it's interesting cause, because uh, um, <laughs> Marriages can be challenging over a period of time as you learn your mate, you learn the things that please them, you right. learn the things that displease them, and, and, and as you work on the relationship and it becomes deeper, you look for the things in which you're going to cause delight and joy in, in your mate. Is that Amen. not is that not the very thing that should, we should be studying Scripture for Amen. in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Yeah. That we more would, we, he that he can experience joy because of us. Because of us, I think the more we, we understand that. our relationship to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we we'll understand our relationship to the body of Christ, and yeah. and of course, the more we understand that, yeah. the better we can understand our relationship mm -hmm. to our mate. I and, love uh, that. So I think I, I I praise the Lord that I still that Gwen and I are still married. The first five or six years that I was married, we were married. Oh, the things I did. She was not first in my life, by the way. She should have been, mm -hmm. but I had my buds, and we were out carousing. We were out uh, fishing. We were out hunting, and you know when I got home, I, that, it's embarrassing today to realize. The position that my wife, which should have been one, the Lord and my wife, you know, she was just somewhere down the list. And I, I'm embarrassed by it, but that's the way it was. Um, Cliff Matthews says, as regards physical suffering, my wife, Evelis, is a real trooper, too. I guess as an ex-surgeon, now nurse, she's seen enough blood and she fears nothing. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. That's great. Avellus. That's great. I mean, how many of us need to, uh, I mean, not that we need her experience and background, but how many of us need to be able to take on the infirmities and be able to glory in our infirmities like Paul did? I mean, how often do we actually do that? How often do we really preach that? And, and, and you know, we look at a, a problem has come, and do we ever say, praise the Lord, I got a problem. I'm, I'm, going, through, I'm going through hard times here. Uh, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. Yeah, tribulation. Is that really our mentality now? Not yeah. really. Yeah. People are mostly thinking, how do I get through this? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Help me. Everybody pray for me. I need help. Blah, 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 blah. 
I say mm. glory in your infirmities. Praise yeah. God for the sufficiency Amen. of His grace. Perspective Amen. is everything. Totally. Is, is, it a, is it a burden or is it an opportunity? Right, right. <laughs> And that'll frankly, change, that'll change your response. And I don't think we get excited enough about the rewards we're going to get for how well we endure the suffering, because <laughs> those eternal rewards are going to be, you, you can't fathom how uh, unquantifiably glorious it's going to be. I mean, um, you know, when, when Paul says that uh, the issues of our suffering today yeah. are not worthy to be compared with the glory I also suspect that that glory will be represented to us in gold, silver, and precious stones. Uh, you, hey, Cliffy, tell Telly Vallis, I'm, I'm sure she knows about us, but uh, you tell her that Joel, Fred, and Hal uh, told me to give you this kiss. Mm. A great big kiss for all of us. Uh, Frank Ledoux says, you can accurately define words, but if you have not the HG, you will not comprehend them. Holy Ghost. Mm. Um, is that the HG? Yeah, I agree. Because, yeah. uh, and I know, I know it's kind of a thing. Uh, David Osteen is kind of a topic now. This whole di Bible being a dictionary thing. David Osteen uh, had a video. What was it? Wednesday he posted talking about the dictionary. I wasn't terribly. I didn't agree with him on um, a couple of things. Although I love me some David Osteen. Yeah, we do. Uh, but uh, at the beginning of that video, he was a little. Taking a little too mystical a view of the King James, I mean, he just came right up to basically talk, almost talked about double inspiration, as if God himself picked those words in English for you to read in your Bible, and that's not how it played out. The yeah. Holy Spirit didn't work through these men and do a double inspiration and mm -hmm. pick those very words that you have in your King James Bible. And it didn't work out that way. That when we yeah. speak about it. Um, and, I, and that, that kind of, uh, and, and then the, the, you know, he didn't like the way Webster defined baptism and yet I didn't agree with him with the way that he redefined baptism based on his view of baptism in the Bible which was weird because he's like baptism is he's like baptism means identification no it doesn't baptism is just a translation from baptizo baptizo means to wash that's all it ever meant but see what the spirit does is use the washing as a means of identification amen, amen. and there's a, there's a distinction between mm. the washing of regeneration and the uh, the means of identification now and the holy spirit took the word baptism and said look the water they are being washed with water, or being uh, uh, sprinkled with water, which is a, a, a form of water, and that is, that is a means of identifying them with the Messiah. And with us, the whole baptism of the Spirit, am I wrong? Mm. It is a means of identifying us with the Lord Jesus mm. Christ and what He accomplished at Calvary. But the word in and of itself doesn't mean that. And this is and this is the very reason why we need dictionaries yeah, no, <laughs> because I'm, the way we reinterpret baptism uh, it can be controversial. I'm sorry, Pastor. Yeah, I was going to say, it, have and it. it's interesting when you Going take and look at minutes. different <laughs> passages of Scripture. You know, because <laughs> talking about being baptized unto Moses in yeah, the cloud and uh, in, right. in the sea. Right. There was no water involved in that. They went no, through on dry ground. They did. Right. There was water there, but right. they weren't wet. <laughs> Amen. So, now what about uh, so Pharaoh's soldiers? <laughs> how would, if it is about washing and cleansing, how were they cleansed? Yes. And you can come up with an, an entire study on. Would it be possible that, that uh, uh, baptism has more than one definition? Absolutely. <laughs> can we can we yeah. go down that route? Maybe? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but to say it only means identification doesn't yeah. make any sense either. Yeah. You have in the um, leads uh, to identification. Yeah. Right. When you get done with that, I want to ju jump back to something that you didn't let me finish. Oh no! Yeah, um, go ahead. Yeah. This is this Was is something I need. This, no, this is something I need to work on. You finish it now. Yeah, we'll this back. Is, and, and Roman, you mentioned Romans chapter eight and verse eighteen in the context of suffering. You know, compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us, and we always think of that glory being revealed in us is future. Yes, that's right. Now. Again, I, I, want, I want to. I want, I for I reckon this. that the sufferings yeah. of this yeah. present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in Amen. us in this present time. Amen. Wasn't Paul's concluding thoughts in one of his prayers in <laughs> Ephesians, "Unto Him be glory in the church"? Amen. <laughs> I love. I love that. Bring it, man. Preach yeah. it, brother. I love it. Yeah, because I love it. the earnest expectation of the creature 
waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are we not going to be manifested? Are we only going to be manifested in the future? Yep. Or are we to be manifested now? Amen. Yeah. Love yeah. That. I love that point. Now love and point. in the future. Yes. Creation will um, recognize it in the future. All right, future. now did you have another point that you wanted to say about dictionaries? Because we, we went back a little bit to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Here's another thought here, talking about baptism. I was thinking about Mark 7, 4. Uh, mm. uh, the Mark wrote, and, and when they came from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Now, this is the Lord talking. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing, the baptismo, of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Now, <laughs> baptismo, washing here, if, 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 I, if, if baptism only means identification, what was it that the table was identified with when they washed it? Are there, was the table identified with uncleanness or was it suddenly being clean now? They were, Dennis, they were, they were <laughs> you know, making it known no and saying that it's ready to be set. The table's ready to yeah. be set. And, you know, and, and I always use that verse when, you know, right. you have Baptists that would say, no, baptism only means to immerse. Really? Did they, did they immerse the tables <laughs> when they washed them? You know, that doesn't make any sense either. Uh, so, uh, but I... Um, uh, I, but I'm, I am with Brian. I think there is, you, you're going down a dangerous territory by saying you don't use dictionaries. And don't use dictionaries. Don't look anything up in the Greek. Don't do this and stuff. That's, that's dangerous. There's uh, nothing wrong with. Uh, you know what I say about that? <laughs> it's balderdash. It mm -hmm. is dangerous. Because now much. suddenly we're all at the whims of just whatever, whatever however the wind blows somebody, however they want to define a, ver a word now. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Well, I'm, I'm still thinking. <laughs> My mind's working on baptism still. So. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's. I mean, how many yeah. different types of baptisms are there in the Bible? You're mm -hmm. going to sit there and really say that baptism mm -hmm. only means one thing? I don't. I don't well, find not. that at all. Right. That'd be true at all. And was it the only word for cleanse? Exactly. You know, exactly. for instance, I think you know. If he said in Second uh, Timothy two, if a man therefore purge himself from oh, these, geez. he shall be a vessel like cups and saucers and things of that nature that would be cleansed. Um, Unto honor, sanctified, but that purge there it, it simply means cleansed, cleaned, cleaned, yeah. right. cleaned out. Right. And uh, so you know, there you have a uh, you know a, a similar uh, right uh, aspect in that. Right. Right. Good. All right, you guys are fantastic. Um, <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Amy Stewart says, "Yep, language skills are very much needed." Right. And you know this, in fact, the language skill thing, uh, you, you need, every, people need to develop that. People are terrible at language as it is, and this whole idea of just defining on your own words without actually looking up the meaning is only going to harm your uh, critical thinking skills. And no. I would argue also that the, the whole idea of deconstruction is good because God is challenging you to, t to take apart, break down, and find the meaning of what he's, what he's saying in his scripture, which is to essentially mm -hmm. develop your own ability to think critically and to discern mm -hmm. his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Yeah. I mean, you know, a deconstruction of words like justified, sanctified, glorified. I mean, that, yeah. those, those would be fantastic studies. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I still love that passage in, in Nehemiah where the priest read yeah. from the from the words uh, of the yeah. of the book of the law distinctly, distinctly. and gave the That's sense, the and then they went among the people <laughs> and caused them to 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 understand. And uh, how did they do that? Mm -hmm. They defined some words. Well, I'm sure they define words. That's because, right. Again, when when someone doesn't understand what you're saying, a lot of times that's the problem. It's, it's not just the total content, there's a word somewhere in there that's that's like that's a right. sticky I trap believe, and they get that. stuck there. Amen. Or they have a preconceived idea about what that word means and it's not exactly what it means right. and, and it's going to skew their understanding of the rest of the passage of Scripture. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's what the priests were doing. Right. Uh, as they went through the people, they read from in case, and they said, in case you didn't understand what we're saying, this is this is what this is what it's saying. And this you know, is that's what one it of means. the one of the one of my greatest arguments for the King James Bible is we don't say that it was perfect. We don't say anything like that. But their approach to it 
was not to get the sense of what was going on as much as it was to accurately define the words and use the words that they, they believe is true. Uh, that reminds me of the article that you did years ago called No Words Stand Alone, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and which we have uh, yeah. on, our, on our website. Yeah. That was in the uh, Grace Journal once, I think. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, yeah, my one and only. Yeah. Article in the Great <laughs> Journal. <laughs> um, well, you deserve to have more, and I want to see more. Hal says directly. here, he says, despite the fact that I am a proponent of the King James Version, I must admit that this is particular charge is true. Well, okay, so going back, we have no man is an island, says the song, and much the same can be said of any word in any language. One of the arguments set forth against the reliability of the King James deals with the issue of the vernacular of the original languages. Right. It is suggested, since many of the original words have meanings peculiar to the Greek or Hebrew languages, no translation could ever demonstrate the total depth of the intended meaning. He says, despite the fact that I am a proponent of the King James, I must admit that this particular charge is true. It is not possible to translate from one language to another and capture the full depth of meaning of every word in every place. To fail to acknowledge this truth would be vanity and practical. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, vainly right, impractical. Right, now here, look at the adverb here, vainly impractical. Now that, that works. On it. That's got, that, that works. That totally works. Mm. Vain, it's not just impractical, but vainly impractical. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in this light, however, would it be true to say that a translation is errant because it does not possess the fullest depth in every instance? This is where the rub comes, and it is here that I would have to disagree with the conclusion of the original language only brethren. The truth of the matter is that inerrancy do, has to do with the accuracy of the words on the page and not some attributed depth of meaning. When we say that the King James is inerrant, we do not even pretend to suggest that its language is not subject to expansion and explanation of yeah, that's right. Amen. word and thought. The suggestion is ridiculous. He says no... Ridiculous. No word in any language, including Greek and Hebrew, can be said to stand alone. Amen. In the English language, we employ the dictionary to discover the full range of definition in a word. Uh, this is also true concerning the original biblical languages. Totally agree. I do too. In, in order to Amen. discover the fullest meaning of any word, we would utilize a lexicon. Uh -huh. The word is rare that can portray its fullest depth in and of itself. This truth can be easily demonstrated from the word of God. And then he gets into Nehemiah, which I love. <laughs> Nehemiah successfully completed the task that God had put before him. He pleaded his cause to uh, Artaxerxes, the king, and obtained permission to rebuild Jerusalem. He marshaled the materials and the laborers to achieve this monumental task. Finally, he personally supervised the work despite tremendous political and military opposition. The rest of all this was the return of the people within the walls of Jerusalem. This remnant of God's chosen gathered themselves together as one man. In the street before the water gate, they called to Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law before them, and he did so. Ezra caused God's word to be read to the people, and in this manner it was, uh, it, in which it was done, Nehemiah 8.8 8 and 8.9. So they read in the book of the, in the law of God distinctly. When yeah, they say the law of God, do you think they meant the Pentateuch? It meant all that they had at that, that time. That's right. Right. That's right. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense yeah. and caused them to <laughs> understand the reading. And yeah, what does distinctly mean there? It means they read word for word. word. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. Uh, well, you would actually uh, give a definition to distinctly oh, in this article here. We'll see if you agree with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he says, each word was read distinctly to demonstrate accuracy. Mm. We can see that the reading in and of itself was insufficient, however, for afterwards the sense, the depth of meaning was also given. Mm. The I priests were among the people teaching them the full meaning of the word of God. Amen. Even when reading strictly from the Hebrew, it was necessary to carefully demonstrate the meaning. Rare is the word, though perfectly chosen, that can be said to reflect the total depth of meaning by itself. 
The issue of accuracy is distinct from the issue of depth of meaning. A word can be completely accurate and yet at the same time have its total depth incompletely realized. Yeah. Another good adverb there. Yeah. Incompletely realized. Yes. Yeah. He was um, with the L.I. <laughs> this is why preachers, good ones, define and expand the thought and meaning of every word. And this time. was true when the word uh, was available only in the original, and it is true today. Love that point. And yeah. he says the King James is God's words for English-speaking people. It's accurate and totally reliable, but there is uh, more that is needed. It needs to be preached. It needs to be understood. It needs to be believed. Most of all, Amen. it needs to be incorporated into the lives of those who read it. I believe that to be absolutely true. Well done. Well hey, did said. you know when you read that, uh, wrote that article uh, so many years ago, it would be read out loud on a podcast? No. <laughs> on, on something called an internet? No. Yeah. Yeah. That goes no, I had no idea what an internet was. <laughs> yeah. you know, did this, you even this, have a computer back then? <laughs> I had I had my first 8086 IBM computer, which was gifted to me by Brother Bob Banner. Yeah, yes, there he is. Brother Bob. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the great debates that I've had have uh, uh, with, with people over the accuracy of the King James had to be over somebody saying, mm -hmm. picking that word, a word, and, uh, and you know, Wanting to prove it. And I, my, my response to all that, very simple. I said, don't tell me you would use a different word. You tell me if that word is wrong. And you know, if it's not wrong, what's wrong with it? Nothing's right. wrong with it. Um, Lourdes. Hey, we got Lourdes in the house from Puerto Rico. She says, good morning, FBC family. I am since Wednesday without any electric energy and water. Oh, no. It was a collapse and fire in the company. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I had uh, We had the air conditioning go out in our apartment on Wednesday, and then uh, we came in here, and the air conditioning in the auditorium wasn't working when I was preaching Wednesday night. Uh-oh. Uh, the only air conditioning I got with that day was five minutes I spent in the car. Uh, I, so I, my heart absolutely goes yeah, out no. to you, Lord. <laughs> I know how miserable that's got to be. We will absolutely keep you in our prayers. Amen. I love you, Lourdes. You take good care of yourself there. Um, uh, did you have something? Well, I was just, I was just thinking of, you know, in the same vein, we're talking about the accuracy of the translation uh, of a discussion that I had somebody uh, recently over um, the verse in... Uh, uh, Philippians 3. Yeah. Our conversation is in heaven. Right. Yeah. And I was told that this is a terrible translation. Right. Right. <laughs> and, citizenship is what, they're, well, what they would often say. Again, insist, I think. It's citizenship, but, it's, but it's, it's interesting if you take and you go and uh, uh, polytomai, ever how you pronounce it, polityoma, uh, is a noun, it is neuter, and figuratively, if you go even look up the definition, figuratively it can be used as citizenship. Yeah. But technically it is it is a community. It's an administration of civil affairs. It's the constitution of a commonwealth and how it's to function. It sounds to me more like Colossians chapter 3 mm -hmm. uh, that we're looking at. Uh, the commonwealth of citizenship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is the issue there about our citizenship or is it our commonality? Right. Our, our bond. And so conversation was used in that particular sense. I think it's an excellent, excellent word. <laughs> translation, particularly when you go and look up what the word means. You know, yeah. it kind of makes it hard to misunderstand the verse. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Jerry, I, uh, thank you, Pastor. I yeah, love we that. Yeah, community Winehouse of believers up in heaven. So I love that. Yeah, I totally, I love that too. Jerry says, whether you like her or not, Gail Ripplinger makes a focus of how the Bible has a built-in dictionary based on its use of the synonyms. This is only found for a high degree within the King James. Yes, I know she is yeah. uh, often cited as the source for that kind of thinking. And there were. Uh, 
some problems with the book. I can't remember what it was. Brian is far more of an expert on Ripplinger than I yeah, am. Yeah, I, 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 I learned a lot from her. Didn't and you <laughs> once try to teach her right share, share with her right division? Yeah, we, we, you, we tried. You, Fred actually I, met her and tried to yeah. tried to teach her right division. And it was with it was with Oscar, and you know, Oscar could get in to see the president if he wanted. To. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and me as a guy who lived making my living as a salesman. You know, I'd have to work and work and work and work and work, and I'll, I'll listen to him make calls, mm -hmm. and he just they just let him go. They just let him come in or let wow. him have it, have the phone. But we we talked with with Gail and uh, loved every minute of it. Um, but I can't say she came away as being a, a med ax dispensationalist. She's a good ax too dispensationalist. But I also realized, you know, when she did when she did her books. She was ill. She was almost everything but bedridden, you know, when she right. wrote his books. Mm -hmm. uh, Persia says, uh, and thank you for that, Jerry. Persia says, I live in life in faith for 45 years now in this exceedingly damaged body. We can all relate <laughs> with that. Yeah, and Persia's I fear had nothing. more operations than me. There are many verses that keep our hearts and minds centered on and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I, yeah, I, and I have a I have a mountain of news articles about all kinds of bad things people think are going to happen. Uh, there's mountains of articles about the economy, food shortages, all this stuff. And uh, do you know who you are in Christ? Do you know Amen. how to endure suffering with joy, with contentment, uh, praising the Lord all the way? Because it may may, ne may be necessary that you will uh, will have to put that into practice soon. Yeah, um, the uh, but you know uh, I don't worry about that at all. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just be fat, dumb, and happy, and I'm going through through life, seeing seeing the good things. I know it may happen, but I also know if it does, God's grace is sufficient. Yep. Um, and uh, how well we endure praising Him throughout that ordeal will uh, have its reward. Also, um, I mean, I don't know of any better uh, testimony than the suffering servant. You. Praising the Lord for everything He has done for you and, you and through you Amen. while you're going through the hardest time in life. Mm -hmm. You know, to have that kind of joy and love and power operating through you through something difficult like a famine, mm -hmm. boy, that's something everybody else is going to want to have. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, I look at this and I, we have had some form of pending doom ever since I can remember. Yeah, we've never been pending doom free. There's always maybe something that's going to come around the corner, and maybe it's like the guy that kept, you know, going through and saying the dam's going to break. Is you know we're going to all die and perish, and because he said it as often as he did, uh, people became immune to it. I hope that's not where I'm at, but you know, just because they are predicting doom, it could happen. But like I say, I, I remember some form of it for 40 years i'm leery of it too in the sense that everybody peddling fear that's also a means of control and i hate to give myself over to them putting you into a state of fear that's not god's way mm -hmm. it's not what god wants and i'm not mm -hmm. you know and and peddling fear is, is also a means of controlling you well, today, it's, you know, I'm afraid of this, so you should be afraid. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm angry about this, so, so you, you should, should be, be angry. angry. Right. How, much, how come we don't hear people, well, I'm really happy, and you should be happy, too. Amen. You don't hear much of that. No, you don't hear much of that. <laughs> you hear that a lot here. <laughs> yeah, but you, yeah. I'm so happy, and here's the reason why. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm thrilled to death about uh, grace, yeah. and uh, I hope everybody else is, too. Amen. Yeah. And so, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I hate. I mean, I hate to do a selfish plug for, uh, mm -hmm. for the podcast. But what, you know that's the whole point. Yeah. Well, who? De but who determined that social media was going to be the prime purveyor of fear and anger rather than the the purveyor of of contentment and happiness? Why would you connect your your emotional life to any to anything online here, uh, to the news, to the to all this other stuff that people say? Why would you? Why won't you connect your emotional life to what God says about you, yeah. to the love of God shed abroad in your heart? Why not? Connect your emotional life to the word and not social media. Right? Why would you commit your emotional life to any other person? Amen. About the Lord I love Jesus that Christ. point. Yeah. Yeah. You are responsible for your own 
happiness. Amen. And the way you respond to the circumstances right. of what's going on. That doesn't mean another that you can don't find happiness in a relationship with another person. Right. But that doesn't define who you are. Right. Right. Yeah, amen. Uh, there was a, there was an article uh, um, about how uh, work nowadays has become its own shall we say, identity for people. You know, it's people have well, abandoned uh, religion, and so now what is their identity is work. You know, and what it is that they do for a living, that's not, that doesn't define who you are. That is a product of the industrial age. Yeah, it it yeah. really is, and we've seen it over the years, and, and many people have remarked about this, how someone went to work. It used to be very common. You'd go to work for a particular company that was somewhat institutional in, in nature and they would work for you know 20 years 30 years even 40 years and then they would retire right in less than two years they're dead they're dead right why are they, again they lost their sense of purpose right you have to have a sense of purpose that's outside of yourself right that's true uh you need to make sure that it's worthy right, right. of that commitment amen you know, we all need people who we can identify with. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about how fortunate we are to have a group of believers that meet together. Super fortunate to have a building that we can all, all meet in. And so I think about dear brothers like uh, Frank Ledoux, basically yeah. out there by himself. Mm -hmm. But today, because of technology, you know, he has mm -hmm. the opportunity to go fellowship with us. He has the opportunity to fellowship at Shorewood, and he mm -hmm. can watch the podcast and the Bible teachings online. Mm -hmm. It's not as good mm -hmm. as being able to come in here and touch people and hug people and fellowship with people, but it's sure better than nothing. All right. And it's great. Amen. Uh, Lourdes, uh, I love you. It'll be great to see you. Uh, Amy Stewart, Lourdes. Um, Love you, love you both to death. Uh, Adrian Jason is in, Adrian Jason is in the house. She says, uh, "Good morning, Saints. It's bright and sunny here in Las Vegas. Great topic on the podcast today. It is our honor having you here. It's great. Yes. Thank you. So make yourself at home. Fix you a cup of coffee." Uh, Bill Barron says, "Everyone should have convictions. It's an issue. That's right. When yeah. I insist my convictions should be your convictions, just saying. Yes." Yeah. That's in, in fact, I love that point. Yes, I do too. Uh, because the nature of grace is not my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. The nature of grace is this is mm -hmm. what I think the word says. Go yeah. be Berean and study it out for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to work. Do you remember the title of my very, very first sermon? No. Uh, I, remember re I remember the handwritten notes of four yeah. or five pages. Oh, yeah, yeah. Four, but close to 40 years ago. Right. It, it was titled, Is Having biblical convictions being biblically convicted oh yes yes that's right <laughs> is that an yeah. and, you know and, and yeah. conviction is is a part of god's design for the church the body of christ it but is. he never intended for all of us to be equally convicted on all points right because that would be the same as having no convictions at all right right we <laughs> each have those things which are especially precious to us right those are the things that motivate us right and the the value that you see in that is how it all blends together uh in a in a picture of true fellowship and worship rather than trying to make people be a copycat if you will uh, yep. uh, and then stamped in your and in, in your image yep Big difference. Uh, I love that point, uh, Bill Barons. Uh, thank, thank you, Brother Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. um, Bill Berean, you beautiful brother. And I hope you're doing great. Give Ted a great big hug and a kiss for me. <laughs> uh, Joseph uh, Deskins is in the house. Yeah, Have you seen goodness. the blowback Brian Ross had on teaching on yeah, Born Again? Yes, I did. Um, Brian sent me a, a lengthy comment before the podcast. Uh, that had been posted, and uh, I, the thing is, that I, I can't, I can't, I can't get myself all excited about the big debate about uh, born again and regeneration. I mean, I'm with Brian on it. I, I totally, I, I don't, I just don't feel like fighting about that. No, <laughs> I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not. I, I can't get myself worked up about it. I, I care more about, um, at least for the sake of the podcast, uh, living the grace life itself. I still, I still my. 
But um, it's, uh, I ha- we have to be careful, too. Uh, there's a number of things to be said about the reaction to it in the sense mm. that, you know, you have to make sure, sh- if you disagree, fine, but you have to make sure mm. that you speak truth and love, you be civil, you don't be vitriolic and nasty mm-hmm. like a certain radio program guy. Um, the, because the because the question is how do you how do you deal and respond in grace and I don't um, so you, you know the only thing about that debate that's worth pointing out is when people are being nasty and vitriolic which is completely unbiblical completely unpauline you have to be a model of grace even in a circumstance like that and the mm-hmm. other point for me is also the fact we can't major on the minors. Right. Get all get all worked up and and uh, split over definitions of words is the, the that's the very thing Paul warns us against in in First mm-hmm. Timothy six. Yeah. So well, yes, when, when the Lord was speaking to Nehemiah, I mean, it's very clear. I say unto thee, ye, he say, I'm saying to you, Nehemiah, I have a message for the plural ye. And that right. was the nation of Israel. Right. Ye right. must be born again. Right. But again, ye, meaning the whole nation of individuals. That's right. To, They're all individuals. To, yeah. And, you know, like I said, and I'm just going to weigh in on this. Bring it. There you people, go. people make a, a, a big deal about, oh, I don't use the term born again. I use the term regeneration. Like, the, like there's this, <laughs> the, Like there's this great big divide between the two. But was it not Paul that says, I have begotten you through the gospel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, you know, regeneration. Regeneration and born again. What does regeneration mean? Yeah. Regenerated. I mean, yeah. I, I love. I mean, I love new creature. I love all, behold all things new. Dead, yeah. buried, risen with Christ. I mean, yeah. I don't. I got. Yeah. I got my own. You know, everybody mm. kind of has their own kind of phrases they love mm. to stick with, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, but, you know someone... we, we cannot divide on the minors. No, we right. cannot major on the minors. Mm-hmm. Us getting all worked up and arguing about right. uh, stuff like this is not, it's not healthy. Right. When I hear somebody use the term born again, I, I want to hear them define it by the gospel that they mm-hmm. preach. And, uh, you know, if they're wrong in that, then we have an yeah. issue of, of discussion. But if I, I don't have as much problem with the, with the terminology as with... The problems it creates theologically That's with right, people right. that don't understand right. the difference between the kingdom program and the program right. of grace. Right. Right. I, Prophecy I, and mystery. It, it's, I don't react in the same way that people do negatively in the sense when they use the term born again. Right. Uh, I do react when people misunderstand it. From the other perspective. The um, you know, we grew up with a lot of people. I'm sorry about that, brother. We grew up with a lot of people, and born again was just, it's common. It's what people use. It's the terminology mm-hmm. that they use. And that's why I say, like Pastor Hal does, I want to know what you, you know, let me hear you give a gospel presentation mm-hmm. and talk about the gospel and what it must be to do it. Because mm-hmm. if you went to Calvary Baptist, as many people would go to a denominational setting, that was a big word. It was even bigger, mm-hmm. I think, in the charismatic movement. Mm-hmm. But we understand today, and we'd probably get two different gospel understandings from those two different groups. Mm-hmm. Nothing to get blown up about. Uh, Persia says, uh, love that, Pastor. Uh, Persia says, as I read it, there are commands given in Romans through Philemon, yet Amen. we are forgiven. Praise the Lord. Yeah, did, did he not give us rules of, of order to take place uh, that they that had to take place back then when they had the gift of, when they had spiritual gifts? I mean, was there not order and rules about how they were supposed to... Uh, let everything be services. done what decently and in order. order. Is, is that not? Would that not yeah. be a rule? They didn't use Robert's rules of order. They used Paul's. <laughs> there you go. You can call it Paul's rules of order. Paul's yeah. rules yeah. of order. Yeah. Uh, Even when it came to the Lord's Supper. Uh, Adrian uh, says, uh, "Well, can't secular society be legalistic too? Sometimes, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Does not the flesh love legalism? That's half mm-hmm. the religions that are out there now. I yeah. mean, the flesh loves to be able mm-hmm. to." There's a rule out there posted on the highway all the time. It's yeah. speed limits. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and the flesh uh, can go to other extremes too, refusing to accept any any uh, any form of legalism or any mm-hmm. rule in society. I think the flesh can be mm-hmm. moved in uh, extremes in either direction. Amen. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Jerry says, art is like today's Pentecostal prophetic utterance, purely subjective. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Cliff says, uh, Persis, it's uh, arguable how many... 
commands in Roman through Philemon are directed to us, well, there's some that are not. You have to rightly divide Paul's epistles, do you not? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. the, some you better. may be directed to pastor shepherds and, uh, and to uh, diaspora saints, uh, then uh, aiding Paul and being told to walk circumspectly. Oh, my goodness, we got Carl, Carl R. Coates in the house, you beautiful brother. He says, greetings, mad, bad crew. Greetings to you, my dear brother. Yes, I love you, man. I do, too. Uh, love Cliff you, says, um, often in a single verse, Paul will talk to three distinct persons, and still many in grace uh, today overlook the complexity of pondering the thousands of diaspora saints. Uh, what that is that word? Di- diaspora? Diaspora? Did diaspora. I say that correctly? Cal, what does that mean? Um, so, yeah. Here, let me I'll, get, let me get, get a proper me. definition here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, dias- dia- uh, yeah, diaspora. Diaspora is what I'm diaspora. supposed to say it is. Um, I still don't know what it means. Jewish people living outside uh, Israel, the dispersion oh, of many people oh. from the original homeland. Um, you got to come up with good words like that. In order yeah, we love to, to, to get everything. Today. Love it. Uh, that uh, Paul actually helped the uh, helped flee from Jerusalem before AD 68 when uh, Titus uh, Vespasian uh, began to destroy it. There, uh, these saints uh, were either aiding or hindering Paul. Faith cometh. And then Persis says, uh, faith cometh, well, th- and thank you for that, Cliff. I like that. Uh, Persis says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, she says, that's a great thing to ponder and for me to revisit, but I still believe uh, there are those uh, for the body of Christ. Um, uh, Car- Bill Barron's is, is bringing it, praising uh, Carl for she dances. All right, that I've got. I got to hear that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to listen to that when this is over. Um, uh, Cliff says, absolutely. I think uh, most command applied. Most commands apply to us today, especially when us right dividers often hold up a testimony to teach and explain to others. Right division. Persis says, Joel, you think the glory refers to suffering in the flesh uh, by accident at thirty something, or is it for the suffering saint who suffers for his faith, uh, such as ministers only? Um, yes, I have heard both. Yeah, see, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Hal on that. He, he, Paul yeah. covers both. Yep, yep. Um, I thought that was going to be a Hal question. Carl says Hal is on fire. Hal <laughs> 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 um, truly is on fire. Uh, um, uh, we could, we should douse him with some water. There's some water. No, we please don't. do. Uh, Cliff Matthews says, uh, "I believe those uh, hindering Paul were the wolves from within the within the bench. And by AD 200, they forced the obedience issue of the mikveh water baptism for Gentiles, and from there uh, down it went." Uh, Bill Barron says, context, context, context. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cliff says, uh, "Inky Pinky Ponky the donkey." I am still enchanted. <laughs> Persa says, was this a Roman edict? Uh, you uh, say the wolves uh, from within, but we know wolves from without. Uh, Jerry says, that for me, the use of dictionaries and lexicons must be used sparingly, if at all. Most of the people who assembled these works were liberals. Uh, were they always being honest in their definitions? Well, you have well they're being subjective to what they thought it said, but mm-hmm. that could be wrong. Uh, I, you know, I think you have to be discerning about everything you read. Uh, you can't take uh, treat a dictionary as the word of God either, hmm. um, but uh, certainly you can do enough homework to be you able know, to. Have, you know, I, when the guy said context, 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 I look at what others explain and feel as if they subjectively know what it means, but then I take their definition hmm. and apply it to what I already know about right division, what I know about Paul being our apostle, and then make sure it's true to the context. I, I would not be lost without a dictionary. But I think dictionaries have really helped me define right. uh, the context. Right. I mean, we. Um, person and, and if you have a question about a definition, again, how did. If somebody. Fred, that's you. <laughs> um, how was our Bible assembled? They, they, they took a multiplicity, the, the majority witness right. of, of textual information to determine, uh, you know, what our Bible should be. And you need sometimes you need a, a multiplicity of 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 witness when it comes to the tools or instruments. For instance, lexicons. Uh, I can remember the big dis- discussion about Acts two thirty eight when I was in an Acts two school. Um, 
baptism for the remission of sins. And the common comeback with that, oh, it's not ba baptism for the remission of sins. It's baptism because of the remission of sins. Oh, man. Uh, and well, again, and of course oh, they, would, they would cite uh, uh, A.T. Robertson's uh, New Testament uh, Greek uh, lexicon and say, seeing that, well, he was a good Tennessee temple good Baptist kind of guy. And his, by the way, was the only lexicon that I knew of that defined it that way. Wow. <laughs> it, wow. Uh, it didn't mean, it always meant for. Right. Not right. because of. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I love uh, Webster's 1828. I don't, you know, I think it's mm -hmm. a phenomenal dictionary. I love the, and I love the scriptural examples mm -hmm. he uses in order to help <laughs> mm -hmm. support the definitions that they've, mm -hmm. that he's uh, providing. And they're, um, uh, in any event, uh, but I, 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 you know, and our dictionary is perfect. No, does the, uh, is, but I think the greater danger here is this whole idea that you should uh, define the word yourself based on the way it's used in the King James Bible. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you need a standardized uh, uh, understanding of what a word means. I mm -hmm. mean, if, if if there's no standard, then it, anything can mean anything, and nothing means nothing. And mm -hmm. there needs a stand. There, there needs to be a standard. Yeah. Um, the uh, there's there's still some value, and and not, this is people aren't going to be happy about this, but well, um, when has that ever stopped you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they think that you shouldn't go back and look at words in the original. Uh, language at right. all right well i'm no i'm no greek scholar but i can i can use some of the greek tools that one of the values in that uh english is is an evolving language it's not fixed it 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 evolves over time the meaning of words changes koine greek does not that's right it is a fixed language right it has been fixed for right. centuries <laughs> right. and and the meanings don't change and in fact if someone tries to change the meaning of of the word you've got a, a, a whole history of definition that would lie in opposition to what they want to change it to right right so to say that that has no value it that has to be a personal opinion you might say it has no value to me that doesn't mean it can't have value to someone else. Right, totally. There's some people that it has too much value. Yep. Yeah, so yep. I uh, love that. A lot of it's perspective. Um, uh, Sherman Kinty says, hello, everyone. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't vainly godly and holy adjectives <laughs> modifying nouns? That's right. And they're very good ones. I love them. I'm, I'm pro adjectives, but you sparingly. Um, and, uh, and I'm all for it. And I, especially in exegesis, the, those adjectives can be very important in some statements. I, I, I don't believe those are uh, adverbs, uh, even though they end in uh, L-Y. Uh, so what else we got here? Liberal wasn't always uh, what the word implies today. Very true there. It was a generous way to be. I can't think of uh, when it changed totally. Uh, Rome's edict, Cliff says Rome's edict of water baptism. No Roman's authority doesn't enter the picture until the fifth century with uh, P. Gregory and Boniface. Um, Cliff says uh, the so-called early church fathers uh, were located near uh, Constantinople, and I think uh, many of them were uh, rich religionists and not willing to suffer any persecution for Christ. I would uh, I would only throw in there that the what what ultimately happened a few. Um, hundred or two hundred years later is the uh, is the <laughs> continuation of the apostasy and the thinking that began in the apostasy, which was pure legalism apart from grace, a works based systems, and that thinking began when Paul sent Second Timothy, and I think that continued through to A.D. one twenty, two hundred, three hundred. Uh, which gave birth to all of the religions that we have now. It all started with that apostasy. I, uh, would be my guess. Is that, mm -hmm. does that sound okay? Yeah, well, it sounds good. You know, and once once that began, it it just degenerated and got worse and worse. 
All right. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got uh, we got Gerard Long in the house. How hey. you doing? Toe row row. Toe row 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 row. He says, and he quote, cites Ephesians two six, Philippians three twenty to twenty one, Zechariah five uh, oh. one, uh, one through eight, and uh, says, and he says all these verses tell you that this is the description of the ICBM with a nuclear warhead dictionary. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. A uh, person says, uh, Brother Fred, the boy who cried wolf. Yes, Joel, fear is so about control. I totally, totally agree. Um, I'm not, and, uh, and, this is, and this is what makes studying the Word, his whole program of grace, that much more glorious. Because God is not about you living in fear, living with anxiety every day of your life. His, he is all about you abounding with joy. Uh, praise the Lord for his beautiful, beautiful program of grace. Amen. Um, Dan, uh, we got um, uh, Daniel Frank right? our identity in Christ. Brother, you are welcome here, big guy. Uh, thank you very much. My, my, one of my favorite phrases, our identity in Christ. Our identity um, in Christ. Michelle Lloyd says, good morning, saints. I'm sorry. Oh, Michael Lloyd. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Michael Lloyd, how you doing? Yes. Great to have you here. Uh, Fernando Miranda, please continue to work out this idea about tribulation saints and the mark. If we were caught up today and that record is believed by trib saints that could be used by Satan to deceive. I'm not sure I fully understand what you're saying yeah, here, that, brother. That last remark. Right? Uh, that last part's a little a little um, fuzzy for me, except to say, uh, you know, we I think it's we don't know when the rapture is going to happen. We're all pre-trib uh, um, believers. We think the uh, it's the rapture that will. Um, implement the begin the Daniel 70th week the whole seven years of tribulation Mm -hmm. Uh, the mark isn't even until you get three and a half years into it basically Um, when it's possible that a lot of the technological trends we're seeing now could carry over into the tribulation and in three and a half years will ultimately mean that we have the mark Uh, but that's nothing for any of us that we would have to worry about um, and it's just uh, speculation on our part. Nobody knows. Um, uh, does that sound okay? Sounds like, good. Right? Uh, oh, by, by the way, I am pre-trib. You know why? <laughs> Paul was pre-trib. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adrian, Amen. Adrian Jason says uh, people uh, try to find identity in all kinds of things today, but as believers, our identity in Christ. Yeah, the That's Father right. believes in identity. He wants you identified with something greater than yourself. And yeah. you know what Amen. that is? That's his son. Mm-hmm. Praise That's the great. Lord for Amen. that. Uh, George um, says he's uh, studying Zechariah 5, 1 through 8, without a Deeper inside of the Hebrew language and practices, you will add and cannot bake any cookies from it, but with the help of the Hebrew, the verses make much more sense. I totally agree. Versus says, uh, bless your heart for saying that, Fred. There's nothing I'd love better than to consistently, even once in a while, attend Shorewood Bible Church in person. I do miss that fellowship. Amen. Uh, Hal's going to be up there in April, by the way. He probably will... He's going to be on that panel. I think with with David Reed, there's a panel going on. I, I think I'm, David and Hal will be on that, that panel. I just know that I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing when I get there. Uh, and uh, mm. maybe he'll speak. Uh, so uh, take a look out to look mm. out for Hal. Uh, in in uh, when is it this month? It's like toward the end of. Uh, yeah, it's the weekend of the twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, Frank Ledoux says, thank you, Fred. It does not replace the local church, but I am truly grateful for being able to stay in touch with these saints of like faith. Gerard says, a flying roll equals Megillah, a cylinder where a roll slash book was put in. Okay. uh, Fernando says, uh, uh, sorry, can't write a lot. I love you, brothers. Um, I will, I'll tell you what, I love you more. Yeah. Good yeah. luck out loving me, brother. Yeah, I love we'll, you dearly. We'll, we'll you beautiful, you beautiful brother. Uh, he says, uh, Brother Fred was one of three other brothers who were instrumental in helping me understand salvation from hell. Ooh. Revelation 14, 9, if any man love you all. Um, yes, thank you. Praise the saints Lord. are warned in Revelation fourteen nine. Uh, said in love, no contention, brothers. God knows. Yeah. Uh, same from here, brother. And um, thank you so much for those thoughts. I really appreciate that. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, we've got. 
Uh, Michael Lloyd saying, thankful uh, for older saints having the grace and wisdom and most of all love to help younger brothers stuck in Corinth and Galatia. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that thought. Gerard is talking about a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth, uh, circumference uh, thereof, 10 cubits. There are ancient Hebrew measurements which fit these sizes of current ICBM. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Fernando says, I believe that after the body of Christ is caught up, trip saints uh, will try to apply dispensation of grace doctrine just like believers mix up programs today. Uh, we've, we've, made those, we've, we've made those comments before, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll bet you money, uh, empowered by his grace, will never be more popular than when grace is over. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best grace preaching you'll ever hear, right. mid-acts, will be when it's irrelevant. Uh, Cliff Matthews is speaking in tongues. Good um, for Cliff. Uh, <laughs> Bill Barron's um, beautiful. Uh, uh, Bill the Berean says uh, regarding Brian's response, I ironic spirit was the descriptive word used. Give me the facts and the resources and documentation. As a Berean, I will decide exactly. It's the ideas, folks. Not the personal attacks. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. I, I love that point. Uh, Excellent. Bring it, brother. If the idea can't engage a person, what makes you think that a bunch of emotion and vitriol are going to increase its impact? Attacks are red flags of a bad idea. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't if you can't support from Scripture a good idea, and you stand, you're trying to defend mm -hmm. a bad idea, you're left with no other choice but to attack because you can't defend it from Scripture. Yeah. To me, attacks and vitriol are red flags yeah. Yeah. of bad ideas. Now, that doesn't mean that somebody who believes something that is correct uh, can't be, can't be vitriolic and yeah. nasty either, and I don't want to give mm -hmm. the wrong nasty. impression. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's just a red flag for me when somebody yeah. is nasty like that. Buster is the banner of doubt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Persis says, ha, Hal, you may not know now, but whatever it is, is bound to edify all saints who hear you. All glory to God. Persis, don't give him a big head. No, no, no. Don't give him a big head. Just because he wrote that article 40 years ago. We've been working hard to keep him humble. Give, give, you know. um, no, hmm. Hal is, uh, uh, we are enormously blessed to have that man with us. Amen. Um, uh, Gerard says, this is uh, an ephah that, go, that goeth forth, ephah, a container which can hold about uh, oh, it just jumped on me. Nine imperial gallons, 40 liters, with an uh, something, 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 burnt offering, offering made by fire, fire offering. Okay. Thank you very there much you for go. that. Uh, Persis says, well said, Bill. I, I, Sharon McKenty says, okay, maybe I misunderstood. Thought you were using them as examples of adverbs. Um, I, love, I love adverbs. I accept they should just be used sparingly. Uh, we had talked earlier about adverbs, and uh, um, there is a proper use for them in, uh, in uh, both uh, nonfiction and fiction. Uh, just, uh, just don't go nuts. Uh, Fernando says, uh, sorry to be clear, Brother Fred was saying he believed a tribulation saint could take the mark and be saved. Uh, we have had debates about that here. Uh, Maybe we'll I, do it again. I'm personally not so sure, but I am open to anything Fred would have to say. I don't believe uh, Revelation 14 says that, so if, uh, you, and that would be my point also. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we grace believers teach this now, it could be used in the tribulation to confuse a trib saint that could take the mark and be saved. Right, totally. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. I, I don't I, mind responding. I love, the <laughs> <laughs> I love the thought that tribulation saints would be listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, very, look, very well could be. Hey, if you're t if you if 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 we're gone Reruns. and you're wondering what to do, let me tell you what you got to do. Go find a Jew. All right. Go find a Jew. Go believe that Christ is the Messiah. Zachariah. His kingdom's coming. Go find a Jew. Go help a Jew. That's what you got to do. But put faith in Christ as your Messiah first mm -hmm. and foremost, and go read the uh, mm -hmm. Hebrew epistles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so does that sound okay as yeah. advice well, I, to say, I, 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 I agree with Fred that if a person were truly saved and they took the mark they're not going to lose their salvation I don't believe if they're truly saved that they they'll will. take I don't believe that they can take the mark um, Fern uh, Fernando the says uh, I'm mm -hmm. a mid-acts grace believer pre-trib thanks so are we uh, thanks, brothers, Amen. for all you do, and uh, please pray for a, a Bible study in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. There's a lot of Bible studies. Uh, brother, it's awesome having you here. Amen. I love you to death, and it, it truly is an honor for us uh, to, have you, to have you join us. Uh, either one of you still remember how to get the free gift of eternal life? 
howls up the devil. I, I think I do. <laughs> I think I remember. Well, believe me, brother, we're yeah. going to be listening. So. Well, again, I was saved when I was 12 years old. So, I mean, that's that's a long time to, to remember back. But it, if you're sitting here listening to us, and maybe this is your first time tuning in, and you're wondering what all this is about, and if you've ever had the thought or the question in your mind, you know, it was, um, who loves you? <laughs> yeah. Well, we do, but more importantly, Amen. God loves you. Oh, uh, amen. I, I, I love the passage of Scripture. It means so much to me, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ died amen. for us. Amen. And uh, I can't think of a, of a more, uh, uh, of a greater demonstration of the love and, and the providence and the care of God Amen. And the fact that he was willing to give his son because he loved us. Uh, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we all suffer the penalty of sin. Uh, we live in a sin-cursed world. Uh, we inherited a, a bent towards sin from our, our father Adam. And because of that, it requires... Uh, in order to have a relationship with God, that, that something be done about that. Amen. And God's the one that did it. Uh, that's the reason uh, he says the gospel, the good news, is how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scripture. There would be no need for him to do that if we didn't have the problem that we do. Absolutely. And the the absolute solution for the problem is is one that we do not have within ourselves, Consequently, God did everything that was necessary. And he says that uh, uh, the wages of sin is death, but. I love that. Word. I love that, but. The gift of God <laughs> is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God loves you. He gave his son. His son paid your sin debt. Based upon that, he says, you can live forever with me. Here's a free gift. It's called eternal life. Amen. <laughs> Who would be stupid enough to say, I don't want that. I don't yeah. want it. You know, it, totally. that, that doesn't make sense to me. Totally. So yeah, just do what makes sense and receive the gift and Amen. say, thank you, Lord, for Amen. what you did for me. All right. Uh, one last uh, comment. Done? Was a, I'm done. Uh, okay. Uh, ahead, yeah, man. I know. I wanted more, too, but he does that to us, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, Cliff Matthews says, how will truly saved folks uh, end up in the trip? They I won't. think what they mean are people who become saved in, during, during the trip. The trip. And they become saved through the gospel of the kingdom, which right. I think the Lord referenced in Matthew 24, which is a different gospel. It's a gospel where you accept Christ as the Messiah. Oh, there'll be a multitude. And when you read the end of Revelation, there's a multitude of people that will be martyred for their faith. Right. Yeah. And, and they're going to be raised, uh, and they're going to reign for a thousand years. One of my favorite uh, passages is the, the last half of uh, Revelation 7, from 7, 9 to 17. As, uh, they're all, th those are millions and millions of people are all uh, b people who became believers during the tribulation that right. were killed. Uh, so there's millions of people that are going to get saved during right. the tribulation. There's no cause for any of us to think that it's a hopeless case for anyone during the tribulation. They, there will be millions that will still get saved. I mean, what's the point of the uh, 144,000 is to have a ministry on this earth during the during the time of judgment. Preaching the uh, everlasting that's gospel. Right. Um, so uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, I love, and I, That's an awesome question. I love you guys. Uh, let me see what else. Do you have anything else here? All right. Um, how about a word of prayer? Let's do it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, how grateful we are. First of all, for Pastor Fred and Pastor Hal and Gwenny walking around in the back there. Um, how grateful we are for all these dear saints who are willing to spend time with us and share with us their years of experience and time studying the word. Uh, how grateful we are for all of the saints in the live chat, for their, for, for their wisdom and their insights and their they're them sharing with us the things that they have come, the conclusions they've come to, and understandings they've embraced. And uh, Father, I just I'm so grateful for this opportunity that we all have to be able to come together around Your Word. And I just pray that all these saints will just continue to be trophies of Your grace in everything they say and do. I pray, Father, that all of us with our our time in your word under the guidance of the spirit that through that process not only will we be grow in all spiritual wisdom and understanding but that we will all abound in love and grace toward each other and toward everyone in the, everyone that we know and encounter 
Um, and of course, we lift up a number of saints here, Father. We think of um, uh, Bob Picard, whom we love beyond words. Uh, Connie Redman. Yes. Uh, we think of Don, uh, Dominic's uh, friend in Chicago. Um, Larry Dyer, um, uh, Grady and Alfreda Owens. Um, uh, still think of Jim Heiniger, um, Ellen Lorraine, um, her physical needs, Jay and Lisa Montero, whom we love, Amy Stewart and her family, and opportunities for ministry she has, uh, Sherry and Willie, Jake and Suzanne. I hope Suzanne's fully recovered by now. Amen. Neil Maranatha. Yeah. I pray he'll be a trophy of your grace. He is. Uh, in these, what may be the last days for him. Uh, Debbie Bridges, uh, Dave and Nancy Perry, uh, John and Anita. Uh, Renee and her brother, um, uh, Betty Loud, Betty Jo's bomb, Mary Beth Hunter, uh, Robin Scott, uh, Roger and Kate, uh, Brian and Sonia, whom we love, Sonia's mom, Rita, and, um, and their son, uh, Noah, uh, Randy and Ellen, and their son, Peter, um, who is now in hospice. And I pray I just totally lift up the entire family. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Mike Moriarty, my grace mate. Fred and Gwen. Gwen in particular. Ann Carter. Uh, Alice and Craig and their families. Uh, especially Mary and her family. Kay Dico. Inga. Ludis. Um, out there in Puerto Rico. And uh, the Ukraine conflict. All our leaders. Every saint that uh, any, all the physical and spiritual needs that all the saints have. I pray, Father, in all these circumstances, our faith will continue to grow exceedingly. The charity of every one of us toward e Amen. everyone will abound to your glory. And that through these circumstances, we will glorify you in everything we say and do. And I just ask all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. All right. Hey, all right, guys, you have a truly bad bad weekend and i and i mean this literally i love you beyond words i love every <laughs> single one of you guys and uh so you have a bad bad weekend we will see you uh saturday sunday morning, morning. 9 30 pastor hal is going to be epic he already told already me before is. saying i'm going to be epic on sunday so don't miss that and then we're going to have pastor freddie bear is going to bring the he's going to bring his a game uh, at 11 o'clock on sunday um, and don't forget, you can still uh, pre-order a copy of Empowered by His Grace, which is available. The link beneath the video. I love you guys. You take great care of yourselves. Amen. We'll see you on Sunday morning. Yeah, Bye -bye. praise the Lord. Thank you.